Bang! Neves Nas. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is not joining us tonight. I might. She's probably not. How's everybody doing tonight? Talica, Breeze, Teddy. How, how are you guys doing tonight? We had eight people in here already. Um, so I've been testing this strop out. So far, it's working pretty good. It is a lot harder, and this is the thing with it, is that I know a lot of people said they have it and that they like it. It's I didn't use the yellow compound yet, so I don't know anything about that. I put my own compound on there from Veneev. But this leather is so thin, and I want you to look at this. I got this one. This is a work sharp um, um, straw. I've refaced this leather probably 10 times, and it's still thicker. It's probably twice as thick as the leather that's on this. So it kind of makes me worried if I'm going to even be able to resurface this. Now, I got some other thin leather, like this stuff, with like a quarter micron, but I wouldn't reface this. Maybe one time, because it's so thin. I got a bunch of other leather that's like this that's been, that's so thick. I mean, this is probably five times as thick as this. And I like that leather, but I don't have it on nothing, so I have to like lay it on a table. And this leather I get from, uh, from kind of like art studios or whatever. They, uh, they sell like leather for people to make stuff with, and I buy big sheets of it. And I can just cut it into pieces I want. It's not the best quality leather. Um, you definitely get a lot better quality leather when you uh, buy actual strop blocks. But it works. Technically, you can use anything for a strop. You can use belts, boots. I know someone, uh, Bam and Knife Guy, he cuts up his whole old leather boots. And he lays it on wood and glues it down with compound. Um, but like this one, you can see it's... You guys probably can't tell, but it's glazed over a little bit. So that means right now it needs to be scuffed up. It, I usually use the, the leather that has the fibers. This is not that kind. This is a harder, this is more like this stuff that I have, which I don't mind. I do like. You got to make sure you lay your angle down nice and perfect on it, though, because it doesn't have the, the fibers to you know to use as a grit at all even though it does have the compound so you're basically just getting the compound to roll across it now i did however try to strop the rockstead on there um i didn't like go crazy on it or anything like that but it didn't work um but it did work in a sense that it did not scratch it, which I'm happy about. Hey, Amy, how you doing? Uh, I'm very happy it didn't scratch it because that's one thing I was very worried about. But it didn't get the nicks out either, though. So I think I have to do basically the what they recommend because with the way the rocks that is, and just like any Scandi grind. Let me grab a Scandi grind. Like a scandy grind like this. You have to you do the whole bevel or the whole uh, grind here. There's no edge bevel. When there's no edge bevel, you have to do the entire thing. So it's not like I'm just doing just the, right here. I'm doing from here down when I strop. So I might uh, just, I'm just going to do what they, they recommend, which is taking a pair of blue jeans or denim jeans. Wrapping them around a 2x4, gluing it, whatever, stapling it, whatever you're going to do. Um, obviously not staples on the face. And then a compound. And I'll probably just use my Diamond Veneve compound. Bell is right here. Why? Nobody... Oh, shit! I'm sorry, Talica. <laughs> it was... Uh, I got to go in real time. It. Um, I'm sorry, Talica. No, it was... Right when I got in, the thing was already up higher than I could see. <laughs> Sorry about that, bud. Um, thank you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, donations around this time of the year are, yeah, very much accepted and highly wanted. 
<laughs> our uh, our uh, things are down really low right now because I took all the ads off of the middle of the videos. So basically, any money we were making off of ads is cut directly in half. So it's really low right now compared to what it was. Which it's not a lot, anyways. Most of the money we get is from the lives from your guys' donations. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Protect Mordex. I like the Mordex a lot. Uh, the only problem I have with it is that, which I'm not knocking, it's an amazing knife. I really, really like the knife. I just feel like they had such a massive opportunity to put a sick grind on there. They could have did a hollow grind or at least thinned it out towards the edge. But instead, and it's not like it's a crazy thick blade stock. The blade stock is perfect for what it is. But they didn't put a good taper. Now, you can lay the edge back and it'll cut just fine. I just I mean, I just, for that money, I, it's just a wish, you know. I wish they would have. But I love the knife. Love the knife. It's kind of like even hinders, you know. Same thing with hinders. I wish that they would thin it out a little bit. Uh, possibly do a hollow grind or, you know. Just wishes. It'd be awesome. What up, Mark? Um, but uh, I got uh, soon. You guys don't know this. This chef knife is an S thirty five VN. So um, I'm going to sharpen this on a video here pretty soon, because okay, so a while back, like when I was learning how to freehand sharpen, I never really liked watching kitchen or chef knives get sharpened and I just couldn't relate them to a pocket knife so I would be wanting say to sharpen say the Benchmade Griptilian and to me it was like I want to watch a pocket knife get sharpened I just couldn't see how it related you know it's such a big knife it's so different but it does it relates so much hey Mark thanks bud bang how many Mark Hera are in here Two, <laughs> dos. Um. Oh yeah, that kind of reminded me just now. Um. I'll think. I'll say it in a second. But so I'm going to do a sharpening video on this and also talk about how it does relate to pocket knives and why you're going to be able to get a lot of information from watching a kitchen knife get sharpened. Anyways, so I'm not going to do Discord on the Patreon. I found out that there's a lot of issues with them. There's a lot of people that hack into them. There's a lot of uh, people that hack and recreate your... Or did I say, what did I say? It's a Discord, right? Hopefully that's a Discord. I'm talking about Discord because like, even another channel I know, theirs got hacked. And somebody created a Discord and it, they're acting like it's them when it's not. So I'm just not even going to mess with it uh, because I don't want, you know that stuff happening I don't need that type of stuff and I don't want uh, people thinking the talking to me and maybe it's not me or anything like that so I'm not even gonna mess with it I'll be sending my Sean VG Mac soon too awesome awesome um so what was I I also got it I got to do a lot of sharpening I have a lot of knives coming up um, for sharpening um, so thank you, Mark. So if you guys, I keep saying this, if you guys have any questions, so when I'm doing the sharpening videos that you guys want to me to make sure I put in the videos, make sure you leave a comment on any video. Doesn't matter. I'll see it. Um, and I will try to incorporate it or try to answer it or teach it somehow. Um, I did get a lot of great answers to the question I asked in the other video. And basically what I was asking, a lot of people took it as I was looking for video content. Like I was like running out of ideas or something, which that can't happen. Trust me. I have fucking hunt lists of videos. Like I have books of video ideas. That That's not it. It was, I was looking for, I'm changing the way I'm doing my reviews come, going forward where I'm going to incorporate a lot more of what I'm saying. So, like, if I say, 
you know, I sharpened it at this, then I will show a video of that. Or if I say I brought it to work and used it, I might show a cutting video. If I'm talking about um, how it cuts a rope, right, then I might cut a rope just to show you. But I'm talking about, I was asking questions, wanting to know, like, what people like the most in the videos they watch. So a lot of people like, like, they don't care about anything else but the action. It's like, I care about the action. Like I'll basically fast forward, fast forward the video just to get to the action. Cause that's what I care about. If it doesn't have good action, I don't give a shit about the knife. So, and then some people it's uh, ergos or the, the, the materials. So they want to hear about the M390 or 204P, aluminum handles, carbon fiber, and what is the material? Why is it so great? Stuff like that. So, and then some people are interested in the internals. What What is a reverse detent? What is a, uh, you know, a detent ramp? What is a, a detent period? So, <clears throat> and then some people like the zoom-ins, you know, they like to, to see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about grip patterns. So I want to be able to show all that and hopefully you're, I'm already doing it now. So like my last video, I'm surprised it didn't get a lot of views. Where's the knife? I know I just posted it today, but normally I get a lot more views when I post a video on this Tucson 264. Maybe it's not a lot of people's style. I thought it'd be a lot more people's style. But if you watch that video, you'll get a hint of what I'm talking about in the video of what I'm going to start doing. And also the video before that, that I posted. Um, I forget what it was on. But what was that on? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. This Tucson. Oh, man, I love this Tucson. But you get an idea of what I'm talking about. I show sharpening it. I, show t you know, I talk about it and show zoom-ins. Um, I like the verdict. What? I like the verdict. The end. I don't know what that means, Talica. What does that mean? Thank you, Monster Racing. I appreciate that. You know, I, I'm. I. I hope nobody takes this the bad way because I'm absolutely not talking shit when I say this. But I'm starting to lose a lot. Not not a lot. There's a lot of channels I love, but a little bit of faith in some of the channels I watch. And I don't know if it's because, like, I'll do something with that knife and I'll hear them talk about, like, that thing that's great about it. And I'll know it's not. Like, that's not true. Like, and it, uh, I, it makes me want to make sure that when I'm telling you guys something, it's because I did it. Because I tried it. Because I know it. Or if um, I'm talking about it, I'm talking about it from experience. I'm not talking about it because I'm just looking at it. And there, I don't think there's anything wrong with the channels that do that. Most of them that do do that, they admit that. They say, like, listen, I'm not a user. I'm just, a, you know, a collector, which is awesome. That, that's really cool. But I don't, like, when, when I'm listening to somebody about that, that knife then, in my opinion, this is just me, I can't take much faith in that knife or what you're saying about it because a knife can flick all day but if it doesn't carry good if it does if the lock fails on it or if it won't go through materials good or you know just things like that or maybe you start using it and then it gets lock stickers you know just like little details i need to know those things if i'm gonna spend especially if i'm gonna spend socom money you know and there has been knives recently, like you guys seen that one that had that lock failure. That's a custom. That's a fucking expensive knife. And I guarantee the maker will fix it. But still though, you know, that's, that's inf good information. And it wasn't hard. Like, let me tell you extremely easy to fail that lock. That knife would be very scary to use. I didn't use it because of that reason. I don't need to cut my fingers off. What's up, Dirk? Oh, also, I'm testing this ARRPM9. I think that's what it is. ARRPM9. Let's just call it RPM9. So, if you guys don't know, it's a powdered steel. Um, Artisan is making it. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that. So Artisan made this steel. It is a powdered steel. Um, and 
I guess the makeup of it is very similar to like a powdered version. What? Do you have my thing? Um, I, I think I plugged it in maybe or something. Yeah. I put them all on the thing. What, which one is it? I don't think I have it. Cute. Oh, I think it's up there. It's on the table. On the bench. Um, It's a like a basically like a powdered version of Nine Star. Now, when you break down a steel like that, the 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 makeup of the steel is stronger or tighter. So kind of like, uh, say, D2, right? Then you have, um, what is it, CPM D2. Is that how it goes? I think it's CPM D2. What's up? There's shit on my chair. Are you coming in now? Yeah. I'm going to fuck you up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, anyways, what I was trying to get to is that this steel is, I'm, I'm going to talk about it in a video soon. Because I have been using it, sharpening it, testing it on a couple different knives. And I am still just so fucking shocked at how easy. I literally, I know I've sat and stopped it a few times earlier. I cut up some cardboard with it. And it had nicks all over. I mean, like, when I ran my nail across it, it was like, brrr, Like, it was like just nicks all over it. Two swipes. I went, whoosh, whoosh, and checked it. And they were gone. Now, that also could mean that, like, you know how they say it, the easier it is to sharpen, the less edge retention you're going to have, right? And that does have a little bit of merit, that's true. But I'm finding that I'm getting better edge retention than it takes to, to strop it. <laughs> It does strop very easy. It t comes back, but it does last longer than you would think for how easy it strops, which I do like because the point I'm trying to make is that, okay, so... Dude, if, why are you cursing so much? My 12-year-old is watching. Are I you cursing a lot? I don't know. Uh, it's just a Stop. natural. I apologize. Um, so, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, if I'm using this steel, the RPM9, and I'm using, say, 204P, if I use 204P and say if I get 500 cuts out of it, I'm just talking crap. If I get 500, that's you, then I have to sharpen it, right? Say if I have to sharpen it because it won't hone back, it won't strop back. I try to keep up with it, but it gets chippy because it's harder. Versus a knife that I say get 120 cuts out of, but I can strop it back, say, 10 times. I'm going to get, do you see where I'm going with this? I'm going to get more cuts out of that than a steel that's going to chip. Because this, every time I think there's a chip in there, it strops or hones right back and it literally comes back perfect. Now, I can't say that for every, you know, one that's going to come in that steel. I'm testing this one right now to see if it's the exact same way. Because that's what I'm curious about right now. One knife is doing it. Is it an, is another knife going to do that too? So we're going to find out. Um, the only problem is it's only a three finger knife. It's such an awesome little knife. This little uh, Malaya. This thing's cool, but it's so small. But uh, what did I think? That I have another awesome. knife. I think I have another knife in in the steel though too. I might. I can't think of it, but I might. But this is the one I've been testing for the longest now. Also, the video on this little guy, he's coming up soon. This little guy is pretty badass. I kind of like the sway back. Um, guys, I was just kidding. If it was that bad, I would have told them out of the room already. I don't think her name is. <laughs> I figured somebody was joking because coming in here, I mean, we've we've had people leave because we cuss too much. I and I just, you know, I, I apologize, but I can't, you know, it's... We say it, you know, like we don't monetize our lives right now. One, because people donate money and we love that. And we try not to make it to where when people watch it later, they're going to have to watch a hundred ads. Now, when I do turn ads back on, I'll probably just put one at the beginning. But, um, but we cuss so much during the lives and I don't think they'll demonetize us for that because we wait a minute till we start cussing, but it's just natural. You know, we're, uh, we cuss a lot in real life. So on the yeah. regular channel, we don't cuss. I, I edit any, well, it can be edited. Yeah. I can edit it out. I don't have to leave it in there, but on the lives, you know, it's raw.
<laughs> oh wait, we're still shop talking. Here comes the sailor in there. Right, exactly. <laughs> the mountains are turning blue on my Coors Light. Nice. Where's my coffee speaking of? Coors Light. Yeah, that was one of the reasons I came over here was for that coffee. Was it? Yeah. Now, of course, I'm having an issue at work the second I sat down. So I'm like in my phone. <laughs> in the military, Williams learned how to cuss in multiple languages. That's how it go. That's how you do it. Cussing at all kind. My uh, my stepdaddy's Italian. He get, goes uh goes off cussing in uh, Italian sometimes. Um, I think you do it anyway from how the edge cuts. Otherwise, it cuts into the leather. Hold on a second. Oh, he's talking to Christopher. Does it matter which direction? Okay, so yes and no. You definitely don't want to go, like, say, this, let me grab a knife where you can really see the edge. Okay, so this is the edge of the knife. You definitely don't want to go this way. You want to flip it and take the edge, lay the angle down, and go away. Now, you can lay the edge down and go down like this, but depending on how you sharpened, your grip pattern should be going like this so it should be going just like that so if you strop this way that's going to make the grip pattern go the opposite way so it's not that big of a deal if you do that personally me i say if you're going to do that do it once or twice but finish going the way the grip pattern is supposed to go now if you're using a factory edge the grip pattern is straight it's literally straight up and down. So you might want to kind of try to keep it as straight as possible. Hopefully that helps. Where's the sheath for this? thought it was right here. Would you move? Oh, I didn't move it. I got it. I got it. Uh, da, da, da. Where did you get your strap? Where did I get this strap from? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, wait, no, Blade HQ. I think I got this from because I got it with those real steel um, whetstones. I think I got it from Blade HQ, but there's so many places you can get straps. Amazon, um, sharpeningsupplies.com. Sharpeningsupplies.com has a lot of good straps. Um, basically, any strap will work. Some are better than others. Some have better cuts of leather. You know, you get what you pay for. A lot of them come double-sided. Now, this is my problem with the double-sided ones is that most of them come where they have the soft side on this side. I don't use that. I never, ever, ever use the soft side of leather. I always use the furry side. So, I don't really care about that. So, I don't mind paying a little less not to get that. Now... If you want that, it, like, I love to get a double-sided strap where it's the furry side is on both sides. I forget what that part of the leather is called. What's up, Alex? Alex Knife Box. Anybody doesn't know, go check out Alex Knife Box. Um, how you doing, Alex? Oh, yeah, we're going to be on... Um, Knife Junkie Podcast, or I'm going to be, sorry. I'm going to be on Knife Junkie Podcast... Wednesday, so I might not do a live this coming up Wednesday. It depends because it's 9 o'clock Eastern. What time is it here if it's 9 o'clock Eastern? Uh, 7. So, I don't know. We might do a live. We might not. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll do his and then jump on ours. I'm not sure how that goes or how it's going to go. Most likely, I'll still do a live because I don't like missing lives here. So, we'll try to do that. Uh, but I am going to be on Knife Junkie, so if you guys want to check out Knife Junkie on Wednesday, that would be awesome. We always have a good time over there with Bob DeMarco. Richie B, what's up, bud? Whew. It's the flesh and... Oh, flesh and grain, okay. The names of each side of the leather. Flesh and grain. So, I like the grain side. Malaya. It's the CJRB, the Malaya CJRB. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I like... The, what you call it? The flesh and grain? Okay, so like the grain side is a side I personally like. I like having a double-sided grain side. Now, the problem I think sometimes what happens though when you have a double-sided is contamination. 
So you just want to be careful with that. So a lot of times I might have one side that I don't put nothing on and I'll have compound on one side if I'm going to do it like that. But it's not that big of a deal, you know. If it does get contaminated, it depends on how... Like if you really don't have just mirrored edges all over the place or if you're not, say, you're not stopping a mirrored edge on it, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. It's only going to be a big deal like if you're, say, stopping a rock stead with a mirror, you know, not a mirror blade or, or if you have a, a 10,000 grit edge and you are just, you know, trying to keep that mirror on there. That's when that'll matter. Um, anyone knows when the giant mouse grand is coming back? I do not know, but I do know the Riv just dropped. Riet made them. Um, man, I sh I almost got one. It's basically it looks like it's about the size of the Malaya. I heard it's the same size as. Um, Sorry, I what? just I know Jack's pain is all. Okay. Yo, I just got a giant mouse. Detent is painfully stiff when closed. Okay, I'm going to talk on that in one second because I can tell you what to do. Um, but I heard it's the same size as the Pilar. The, the CRKT Pilar. And it, it's a... Why did it's, you just say it, it like that? What, how did I say it? What did I say? Oh, I thought you were saying it like someone talked shit about the way you had said it the first time. No, I'm saying it's the same knife as this, the Riv. It's... It's just a small version. Oh, yeah, and it's a frame lock. But it looks so badass. And it's done by Riet, so it's a lot better than what uh, what Jack is talking about with the detent on the original Ace Biblios. Now, a lot of QC issues. There was a lot of QC issues with the Ace Biblios when they first came out. You said he just got his... Uh, or, but I'm, I'm saying... Riv? What's a rib? That's what I was just talking about. I was doing something. Okay, cool. the the giant mouse rib. It's that mini one. I, sh oh. I showed you. Oh, all I showed you. See, I was too scared to get it, and I'm glad I didn't now I because just, now Jack has scared what are you me. Talking about? He's talking about Nice Biblio, ain't he? Nope. He's talking the about rib. the rib. I just watched um. Uh, oh, B Wallace. B Wallace just got me. He says it's phenomenal. Are you saying Jack's lying? I'm not are you saying. Calling that. Jack a lie. Maybe he's not good at reverse flipping. Oh. I don't know. Oh, shit. I'm saying <laughs> oh, that they're, they're made by Riat now. They're not made by fucking Giant Mouse. That's what I'm trying. I'm sitting here trying to tell the damn story. So Ace Biblios, <laughs> these ones were made by them or whoever. I don't know who their OEM was, but it wasn't Riat. Riat picked up the ribs. Now, if the detent is too strong, on ours it was very strong at first, too. I spent two weeks just fidgeting <laughs> it, and it broke right in very nicely. Can um, you read this in uh, Nick? Did, can when I, I read this comment, I read it in Nick Shabazz's voice. Um, I want to know if you can read it in his voice. I'll read it in one second. So you can just keep fidgeting it, or you can take it apart. And it, that's a frame lock, so it's really easy. Take the one scale off, and then just move the lock bar ever so slightly away from where it locks up but just a little bit and it'll lighten up the detent a little bit it's really easy to fix detent strength like very easy just don't do it too much because it just a tiny bit changes the detent it'll be very it'll be too easy to flick if you go too much all right stealing shabazz's words here you have to read the, in his voice if you're gonna okay i'm not doing my head then <laughs> stealing the only real complaint i have so far is that it's a bit Hot spotty between the wire and clip and the that. space and other hard. The only real complaint I have so far is it's a bit hot spotty between the wire clip, the backspace, and the other hand contour. That was so perfect. <laughs> you did it good. Um, I heard him say um, it's like holding. Hey, it's like uh, how do you say? It? It's like holding um, a handful of bees or a handful of wasps. Hey, Mr. Oh. C, thanks. Merry Christmas to you too. Merry Thank Christmas, you for the donation. Happy holidays and happy New Year. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm good at most impressions, but for some reason I have trouble. He's a hard one. I'm actually pretty, when I sit here and practice for about five minutes, I'm pretty good at Nick yeah. Shabazz. I do do everybody's voice sometimes. Me and her will just be goofing around the house, yeah. and I'll do everybody's voice. But I'm just not good. Like, if you ask me on the spot, not good. For some reason, it just can't. I don't it, 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 The um, 
the cadence of his voice is a little hard to mimic, and, like, the way he does his syllables is hard to mimic. And then, like, even though he has a very distinct voice, it's not distinct in a way that's easy to mimic. Right. You know, it's very... Like, I don't know, it's very hard to just pull it out of your ass. But when you sit there and practice for about five minutes... You were getting the I digress down pretty good. Oh, I was getting a lot of things down. I was doing his whole beginning, remember? Yeah, remember that one time... The, in the you shower. Were, yeah, we were, I didn't I mean getting, to bring that up, yeah. but in the shower you're doing his voice like that whole fucking time. Yeah, I was doing the whole beginning of his set, like what he does. So Jared and I, Q and Fiend, all right, Q and Fiend says, I'm not convinced that's his real voice either. So I did some serious investigating one day, and we were like, if that's not his real voice. Hey, Mom. Hello. If that's not his real voice, thank you, Mark, uh, that, um, if in his first video, it's probably not that way. It's probably I, I've something already he's heard. To, I've already I know, to, yeah. but if you go back and you look at his first video, it actually isn't. It's not his real, true first video. His true first video is gone. Deleted it. It's gone. Yeah. Actually, the first like year of video, or it, it, it's a good chunk because if you look from when he says he started to when the videos actually start, there's a big gap. I feel like it was almost like a six. I do gap. know if you go back. To his beginning, and I don't want to sit here. So I and feel like, like it's because his voice is different. That's my assumption. You can, I mean, he does imitate other voices too, which I, um does. I mean, that doesn't mean it's not his voice. But if you go all the way back to the beginning, it is a little different. Like listen to his the videos you can find that are his first videos that he has uploaded. It's not as strong. It's not as strong. But we're just that, speculating. That, though. That's pure speculation, <laughs> and I that can just happen. Right? You could just do that. Like, you, he could live in one state for a while and then go to another state and you kind of pick up other people's Yeah, that's not... Bo- I know he's from the Boston... Has, is he from the Boston area? He's in California. That does not sound like Boston to me. Yeah. I didn't think he I think was from in, Boston. I think he's in California. I think people assume he's from Boston because they hear that voice. But Boston isn't like that. It's, like, very short Boston, you know, very short A's. And it's very particular, but it's not as hey, intense. Hey, thank you, bud. Woo! Thanks for all the sharp reveals. No so, problem. I have bell short. I have, I have a lot more oh, coming nice. up. A lot more really good ones coming up. Nick is from New New York. Um, I uh, I don't know. I don't think it. I mean, I guess there's probably areas around New York where some people sound like that. I know. Like, he said he's not from California. Lavender says he's not from California. No, I thought he lived there now, not from. I don't know where he lives. I'm just speculating. I thought I heard that he lived in California. I don't know where the fuck he lives. I don't know anything about him. But I do know this, though. Like, his voice, that dialect or however he speaks, you know it, right? You know people that talk like like that. But pinpointing where that comes from. It's, yeah. Like, you can't be like, oh, that's the Bronx here. No, it's not. Well, that's Chicago. What it is, and I don't. If you ever see this, Nick, I'm sorry. But in my opinion, it sounds like a fake accent. It sounds like an accent from, like, New Jersey, Chicago, New York, New York, Chicago, all and together, Boston, yep. all together. Yep, and somebody exactly. made a very good yep. point, which is what my point was, how I know it's not a Boston dialect was the same reason is that he doesn't do his A's quite yep, right. Yep. And also he has like no cars. R's. No, <laughs> somebody said he doesn't have his R's left because Boston people, they don't say... They don't say car or bar. They say ba, ka, 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 yeah, ka. ba. Um, you you know, want to go have a like drink that. at the bar? Okay, did you get that one? It was New York City, now San Francisco. Oh, you were right. Hey, oh, hey, hey. hey. Told you. Um, that's what I thought I heard, so. Um, oh, it but does kind of have that New because York Because he Jewish. moved. Um. You know, I'm guessing he's from New York and it's his real accent. I don't know if it's fake or not. I'm not going to say it's fake. Yeah, and he I'm never says speculating. wicked. What? He never says the word wicked, which, you what know. What do you mean? I don't understand. Everyone, oh, you're wicked smart. Like, that's a oh, thing in Boston oh, oh. that people do. Wicked. Everything's wicked. Yeah, Oh, okay. that's wicked cool. That's wicked smart. But, you, you know, know you can grow up. Like say, if I, like, say if I'm, you can be from anywhere and not be, like, from the neighborhoods that use that a lot. And you can yeah. be raised around people that don't. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, this is, this is what I'm trying to say. This is what I'm trying to say. You can be from New York, but raised by people from Chicago. 
That's basically what I'm saying. So you're going to go to school a certain type, but you're also going to get your accent yeah. from your parents a little bit. Yeah. So you can get a strong mixture. There's a lot of that even I, around here. And that's, to my point, is that, like I said in his earlier videos, the accent is there, but it's not very strong. And so mm. I think he's just exaggerating something that, uh, yeah, that's what I said. It does remind me. It yeah, does have that Jewish sound. Jewish accent. The, from New York specifically, though. Um, Chicago. <laughs> but I, I definitely think that... Uh, that he um is just making it a little thicker. What's up, zombies? Uh, <gasps> zombies. Stop the philosophical. Phil, like, philosophical. Ph philosophical zombies. Look up at old sports radio host named Ralph Barber in San Francisco. Sounds a lot like Nick. I like I said. I've heard the accent a lot. Mm -hmm. It's just I can't pinpoint like and say, oh man, that's Southside Chicago accent. Oh man, that sounds like the Bronx. I can't do that. You haven't heard that specific one. It sounds like a mixture. It does. That's why I said it sounds like a New York mixed with Chicago, mixed with uh, Jersey, mixed with yeah, something but else. But a lot of it is not. Shaker the, and teas in the house. Some of it is not What's the. Up, uh, but? Is some of it isn't the actual accent. It's the cadence in which he talks. The like the the the, 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 the 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 quickness and the the certain well you know anyway the like it's yeah. like this that, that's part of what makes it sound as weird or as unique as it does speeds up and slow down exactly he, to be honest I it's think a weird rhythm somebody said do MC impression on I think MC would be a very hard one and the reason why is because he has a typical voice right it's easy to get yeah. somebody who has a unique voice you can do his laugh though but do I. I said you could. Yeah, but you you can I could probably do him, but it's it just wouldn't sound right because you'd have to sit there and try to get it down and listen to him at the same time, and I think you'd have to copy some of his words, like say when he does that. Um, Hi, I'm Ralph Barbieri. I am the lie detector administrator for the Maury Show, and I that think sounds like Ray New York. Maury yeah. Was Old New York. Yeah. It is a little bit like Nick Shabazz, though. Even that guy is a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was. So it is kind York. of a New York thing. I'm sure it's a New York accent. Um, and if he's from New York, it makes sense, right? Especially if you're born and raised oh, around Michigan. certain people. What I was I about to say? Michigan. Oh, the like, MC has those terms where he uh, says the same thing in every video, like um. Here's two spider codes. How does he say it? Here's two <laughs> spider codes that, uh, with an awkward carry profile, but that nobody ever complains of. And one time I said in its comments, I said, I'm fucking complaining about it right now. <laughs> I don't ever want to hear you say that nobody ever complains about it. I'm complaining about it right, right now. Right now, just to fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, just to fuck what you up. What up, Evil Eve? You can't never say, here's two spider codes with awkward carry profile that nobody ever complains about. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly what? how it goes. You, you're a little sass ass. You did that to fucking uh, Metal Complex with that grape surgery thing or whatever. Oh yeah, he kept saying um that oh it it'll never it, or how say he says it cuts it's not gonna shave any grapes but it cuts and he was talking yeah. about a hinder so I sharpened up a hinder and then in the video I shaved, shaved grapes. grapes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! I love fucking. With it's so other funny guys. because every single area that we said Nick Shabazz's voices come from, somebody from that area has been like, "Well, I'm from there, and no one talks like that." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Shaker MT's in the house. The best picture of him was a reflection in his somewhat recent watch review with really reflective case. He didn't have his mask on. He didn't on. have his mask on? Because I remember way back in the day you could. Well, we did it one time. It. One time we did it. And we, we know, I just noticed it. I'm like, damn, you can we, see his face. Well, we slowed it down and we seen his face. And um, But yeah. then since then... He was all, he started wearing a mask. It was literally right after yeah. that he started wearing. I a never mask. told anyone what video or anything. I just was like, oh. no, I ain't trying to out him. If he no. if that's his, that's his own prerogative. Yeah, Anybody who gives shit. him shit for that, I mean, come on. You, if you're not willing to also like do that, then and like let a hundred thousand people know who you are and everything, then you can't you can't talk shit. 
Um, can you please try your best Shabazz impression? The, the fans, they need to hear it. I don't know. Yes. Yes, mask, but still got a really good... Oh, yeah, he always has his mask on, though. If he has his mask on, he'll he'll show his actual face. He even goes to the knife shows, and he walks around <laughs> without the mask, but he doesn't talk. Unless if you, you know who he is, then he'll talk to you or whatever, but... And I've never been. I just heard this is what happens. But then when he does reveal himself he's wearing his mask so he'll take pictures of people and yada yada but uh but um, he walks around and tries not to reveal himself because he knows as soon as he opens his mouth everybody knows who he is now i'm guessing that he changes his accent when yeah. he goes to the night shows he probably walks around and just changes his accent nobody will know who he is so like much like a showman or whatever yeah so, my like name a showman is, you know what i mean my name is nobody says a medford couldn't shave grapes are you gonna fuck him up a Medford can't shave grapes? Yeah. I don't have any Medfords. Yeah, you do? I got one. Yeah, you do! I can shave a grape with a Medford. With mine? Um. That's the one I was thinking of. What are you thinking of? I mean, I could. It's just so, so small, it'd be hard. But I probably could. Jared, do you like the harness giant silkworm? I don't know what it is. The giant silkworm? <laughs> what a fucking name. Fucking oh, Bree <laughs> Breeze is fucking farming likes like a, like a hit man out there right now. Like, literally, Casey's like, how's everyone doing? <laughs> He's like, we'd be better if you hit that like button, yeah. Casey. <laughs> Everybody can see you haven't liked the video yet, so why don't you get to that? I wonder uh, how much our likes would go up right now if we let everyone know that we can actually see their, like, who has and who hasn't. Do you think if they knew that we knew that, that our likes would go up? Oh, for sure. If everybody knew, like, if we seen the names... No, that we can. That's what I'm saying. If we could see the yeah. names, then we'd be like, yeah, Evil E has not we liked our video yet. We just don't call you guys yet. out, because we're right not now, assholes, but we know. Yeah, we can see all the likes, who likes and who doesn't. And Evil E, you haven't liked the video yet. So, you could you could get on that. <laughs> and if we did do that, everybody would be dropping the likes. 70 people in here... Thanks, Milo. We appreciate I that. My bed. <laughs> We're <st> hey, man. <laughs> We're going to start out, and people. I bet them likes are about to start going up. <laughs> I want to be a like harvester. <laughs> we'll get on it, Aaron. <laughs> uh, I'd take it back immediately, <laughs> Tristan Murphy said. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we can see that you didn't, so thank you for sorry, that. Everybody liked, but uh, Tristan, she never likes. Likes be flying up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll even take the dislikes. What's up, Ethan? Uh, <laughs> disliked. Uh, JK, wait, JK. he asked him, uh. hey, are you Nick Shabazz? And he didn't answer, but instead he just handed him a business card. I heard that um, with his name on it. So without the mask, he just tries not to talk. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, I'm not sure if he changes his voice or not, but he is good at doing that. So I figured he probably would do that. But yeah, that's what I heard that he does. That like if you out him, he just he asked one time. He said, "Listen, I'm going to knife show. If any of you guys recognize me or hear me talk, and you guys see it's me, don't start freaking out." Don't tell everybody. Don't let everybody just walk up to me. Talk to me. I'll give you a card. I'll talk to you. But don't sit there and be like, hey, there's Nick Shabazz. And then start taking pictures. And He doesn't want that. So, And I would respect that. Thank you, Tristan. Wait, I'm confused by your comment. You said I'm a dude. Did so... I say she? Did I say she? I might have said she. I'm Do you, sorry. Don't you know a girl I have a cousin. Tristan? Oh, I was going to say because I didn't say that. I have a cousin in Tristan. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Evilly, I hate to break it to you, but we are completely fucking with you. We cannot see people's likes, just so you guys know. We absolutely can. We just can. took a wild guess, and that is hilarious, because they absolutely did go up. <laughs> <laughs> but dislikes do count just as much, so we're always willing to get those. I'm sitting in a vet Oh, park shit, that's the first time he's ever been misgendered. Energy. I didn't hear you say what? she. What? What? A, day, uh, a groomer injured Ian's <laughs> puppy's paw. Damn, that's messed up. Would they clip the nail too far? Um, I know, I don't. I had my, <laughs> my dog. She, uh... Well, Sorry, I'm not laughing. I'm laughing at something else. I'm not laughing about the paw. My, uh, my dog, she went through about three years, maybe even longer, where she broke every single nail. And I mean, I would have Who them trimmed, geared in. 
And she, she even, okay, so she was a big dog, big mastiff. And when she's running, she, in the snow, when it would snow, for some reason, she would slice her paw open. Um, because, like, where, like, places she grew up had lots of tools and lots of, like, construction sites and just lots of things, so right? So super unsafe. No, no, this always happened at the farm. Oh. But I'm saying it's a farm, so right. it has things, right? And she was uh, gear Danes, and she was Farms all over do the place. Have things. Well, like, they do. like I mean, like, um, like there's t stuff underneath the snow that you can't see, like yeah. in fields and stuff. Yeah. So she she would always come back with her paws sliced open. I'd have to take her to the emergency room, get it stitched up. But her nails, though. Even in the summertime, she because she's so big, she was like 130 pounds. She when she's running, she's running so hard, and her paw, her nails are going into the ground so hard that she would just snap them, and she'd come back, blood just going everywhere. Her nails twisted back like this. I'd have to remove it, put some bleed stop on there. I never took her to the vet for it, but I uh, because I'm pretty good with um like animal veterinarian stuff. Do a Stasa impression. Everybody wants impressions. Yeah, Listen, I'll tell you, you what. you refuse. I you, sat there and did the shittiest Nick Shabazz I'll impression tell you ever, what. and I'm a girl. I'll tell you what. I'll practice my impressions before you a video. Say that. No, I've never said yeah, that. Yeah, we've talked about this before, and you're like, I have no, to practice. No, no, no. You can do the slicey dice. Well, one. because it doesn't make sense if you it doesn't do sound like one. it. Which one? Just his intro. Slicey. Oh, the hello, slicey dicers? Yeah, well, now you messed it up because you said it normal. Oh, sorry. Now do it. When did Shibanez move to California? He was in Michigan. I thought it was like a year ago he moved. Maybe two. Yeah, about two years ago. Ha, damn. Hello, Slice of Dices. Oh, that was good. Um, He moved this year. Uh, he was in Michigan in 2019. I don't know. I don't follow him. I mean, I follow him. <laughs> I mean, I don't follow his moving you know, places. I follow him very yeah. closely. I don't yeah. I follow him, but I don't follow him closely. Follow him in if, real you know, life. if you know what I mean. Not online, but in real life. Will there be beatboxing with the oh, knives yeah, this I time? That shit. I don't know. See how it goes. You never know with Neve's knives how it's gonna go. It needs knives live. I want a pro tech mala. So I, have, I think a lot of people yeah. do. Is that the button lock one? Yeah, and it's very, yeah. very popular. Are you I getting the Tonto PM2? No, I, I, we're not getting the Tonto PM2. What steels are similar to Rex 45 Maxima? Maybe Rex 121. Um, S90V isn't like just like it, but I mean, you're getting up there. Um, K390. Um, there's a couple other ones. Those ones are good. Uh, me too. I have one hopefully coming to the little shop. You know what still I really like right now? M4. M4. I know it's not like a stain resistant steel, so you do have to keep it up. Keep up with it, like with uh, keeping it clean and keeping it dry. But damn it, I like it. And I also like the Rex 45 too. This you know, shit is. You know what steel I've been ass. liking? I gotta strap this one. What? CTS XHP. Yeah, I like CTS XHP. Do you know why? Why? Because it's on your techno. Yes, and the techno cuts good. Okay. Okay. You want to talk about that now? I fucking do. Okay. So the techno does not yes, cut. Yes, it does. Okay. So this is the thing. What you're feeling is because Pure you're saying excellence. You're saying it's, it cuts good, right? Because so great. what I'm saying is that it's it's cutting good, but not from the blade geometry. So it's not from it being thin behind the edge or having a good taper yeah. in the grind. What you're where you're feeling it from is the ergos. In my hand, it'd be shit for ergos because ergos. it doesn't fit in my hand. Which I love the techno. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying you have leverage, so it's thick, like. Okay, so put because this on. Because it's in my left hand. This is my point. So like this so right here, the right? Clip problem. I would have great ergos with this thing over, say, something like this. So even though this thing is ten thousandths behind the edge with crazy good geometry, this is gonna cut better for me because I have a grip. I can put pressure on it. Yeah, yeah. M four is mine too. Thanks, Tristan. My Gil Bradley two is my favorite in life. 
Tristan um, the male, the man, just to be clear. I love my Gail Bradley too. Love, Douglas love, did not love just it. Move. Gail Bradley too is amazing. After I modded it, it really got good. I love that knife. I even like the Advocate, and I know I didn't talk about it in the video, but I know they don't make them no more, so I can't talk about it too much. But the first one that they made was messed up, and they made a new batch of them, and they didn't do good because of their first batch, but the second batch did is really good. But it doesn't matter because they don't make them no more. Hey, but the Gail Bradley Chew is amazing knife. Can I answer one video game question? I don't care. Yay! Aaron, to answer your question, I am not playing it yet. Because What's... I am still playing Dying Light. I played it Cyberpunk for about an hour. And then I stopped and decided that I wanted to finish the game that I was currently playing. Plus, I'm considering switching to playing it on Stadia instead of PS4 because a lot of people haven't been having any of the uh, issues on Stadia. Uh, and I have a free Stadia, so I might as well use the damn thing. So, um, yeah. I've put a polished edge on my M4, and I've also put Toothy. Um, I really, I think the, the, the steel does take a great polished edge so i think either way i think it depends for me on the the thickness behind the edge so if i'm gonna have a big edge bevel then yes i like the polish i also like a toothy though so i it's it's kind of a hard question because i love a toothy edge and i also like a polished edge so it just kind of depends but uh it takes between 600 and 3000 grit it does really good i didn't even see even 4000 grit Hell yeah. What? Techno to slays. Slays. Fuck yeah, it does. It just, Why are you acting like I talk shit about it? I love the knife. Did. No, All I, I did it. said was it cuts good, and you're telling me. No. It, now you're no, saying no, no. No. The no. reason you think it, it cuts good is it. this. No. So you just think it cuts well, good. Well, there's a difference. I'm saying there's a difference between geometry cutting and leverage. Well, I didn't say what kind of cutting. And, I just said it cuts good. And I'm saying I agree with you. Now you agree? I'm agreeing that what you feel... Stop <laughs> saying that! Those words are upsetting and so is that strap and you know that strap is upsetting Oh yeah, me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pick a different one. Most of them don't bother me. She's starting me. to lose her fucking mind, folks. It sounds Losing like her mind. paper. Losing her mind. I love having a fine polish on my M4. Currently sharpening it now. Actually taking it up to 0.1 micron. At 14 degrees per side, might put a micro bevel on it at the same time. I wouldn't put a micro bevel on mine. And you're talking about the um the Gail Bradley too, right? I, I mean, to me, it's so thin behind the edge. 14 degrees per side. That's whoo, <laughs> that's laid back, boy. Um, oh, you know, speaking of that, I want to talk. I'm gonna finish talking about that, but then I want to talk about this. But 14 degrees per side, that is laid back. I did mine at 17 degrees per side, and man, it cuts like a champ. Cuts really good. I wouldn't personally put a micro bevel. Maybe at 14 degrees per side, I might. But I did take, which Lavender Pants got me this, this mass drop, the Terzola mass drop. Oh, yeah, I, I that guy. put about, on, on one side, I put about a 22 degree angle or something like that. Then on the other side, I put a 15 degree angle. Why? Ju oh, just to see because okay, so when I when I've sharpened chisel grinds before and got mm -hmm. chisel grinds, I realized how great they cut. They, mm -hmm. they really cut good. So I was curious, like just is it gonna cut good? Is it not? What what because you hear a lot of people say, like, oh, if your edge bevels off, it's gonna cut like crap. Which so it's like, okay, well, let's see, right? Let's find out. Now, so the theory is is that when you're cutting with that, it's gonna turn and it's gonna, you know, like make your, your cutting off. I don't know about that. I'm gonna do a video on it and talk more about it after I test it a little bit more, but so far this thing cuts like a beast. I mean, compared to the way it cut before, which makes sense because you got to think going from 22, 25 degrees to 17 degrees on one side, that's going to make it go through materials just a lot easier. Now I'm not finding any turning or anything. Now I haven't done wood yet. 
Maybe in wood it might chisel in. <laughs> Tristan Murphy again. Thank you. Thank you. Can you review oh, knifepointgear.com strop? It's Outdoors 55 on YouTube Company. Um, I didn't know that he made a strop. Um, but, yeah, I'll see if I can pick one up. I will get one. Um, Thank you. Breeze said, I think Kara on the back end has put something in there to automatically delete any comments. They have the word rock said. So as soon as he did that, I went to see if I could delete his comment. <laughs> and uh, I click on the options and one of them is put this user in a timeout. I'm going to start putting everyone in fucking timeouts and it's going to be hilarious. That's funny. Don't do that though. <laughs> We've never blocked, kicked anybody out, no, anything. I know. But a timeout is hilarious. Yeah, a timeout's <laughs> funny. You're a timeout, motherfucker. I wonder how long it is. If it's like two, five seconds, oh, that'd I, be funny. I think you have to put them back on, don't you? Or is it just like a five minute? Thing? I don't know. Well, I don't know how that goes because we've never done that. No, we've never. I don't even, either. I've never even looked at the options before. We've never even thought. Remove. About, <laughs> now I would imagine if if a bot oh, came in here, right? I can remove it. Yeah, of course I you know can. That. Well, I don't do shit like that. That's what we're talking about. If a bot came in here, though, I, one of the people, one of the, what are they called? Moder moderators would kick them out because they would see it. Like, they come in and they use, like, one word and they keep doing it. Now, if it's one of the people in the comments that we all hang out with, I'm not fucking kicking them out for anything they say. <laughs> like, you, you guys don't come here to hang out to get kicked out. <laughs> um, but I do know other channels do that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I don't like it, but, I mean, it's their channel. They can do whatever they Michael, want. Michael Michael Morgan said, I will put a timeout on my subscription. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, oh, by the oh, way, shoot. Casey, uh, yeah, I did already put Douglas in a timeout, because you said he moved, and that's scary, and I don't want him looking at me. Um, I know you can block certain words from, like, the standard comments. I didn't know that I could in live comments. I'm not I don't blocking care. shit. I'm not doing nothing. The um, only time, like I said, I'll block somebody if they're a bot, or if you are coming in, like, like I've had people argue with me, fight with me. I've had people call me names. I've had everything you can imagine. I didn't block nobody. I had a conversation with them. So a lot of times they fucking leave because they're having a, they wind up trying to talk shit, then they find out they're in the middle of a conversation. And they're like, oh, fuck, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Message deleted by Neve Nine. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'll never do that again. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. That's our first one ever. Ever. Oh, wait. No, wait. You know what? Against the moderator. <laughs> Against one of the moderators. I'm lying, though. There's actually... Listen to this. I have this fucking bot. It's got to be a bot because listen the to this. The one that... Um, it's in our... It's, the you, titty one? Yeah. If you guys go to our comments and our videos, and almost every single video I post, there's this this uh, Asian bitch with her titties Don't out. Don't say Asian bitch. Why? So She's an Asian bitch. The bitch part. Oh, the, the bitch Asian part? part? Oh, that's not the Asian part. Like, she no, is fucking man. Asian. Okay, so anyways, so she's got her tits out, but every single time it's a different name because I literally remove her and I report them because I didn't do it for like a month or two, but then... I know the first time you like like the comment and you're like... Like, whatever the comment was, you're like, thanks, it was like, nice video. Yeah, so well, at first it was real subtle, right? It was yeah. very subtle. Then she starts coming in and leaving, like, ten comments for, per video. And all of them are like, I need a man. Will somebody love me? I love you. Stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, I can't deal with this bitch no more. Literally, like, people were telling me, like, man, this is crazy. So, um, I did start blocking her. Now, she shows up as a hundred different names. Like, I mean... She was like, oh, you want to block me? Oh, you, oh, you want to fuck around? It's a real person, wanna, and I, she's pissed. You know what's funny is I feel like I found her on Instagram because we got followed by this person that looks identical to her. Identical. And I'm looking... Yeah. At, when I'm looking at the thing, it's so small, but <laughs> in a big picture, they look the same. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, but that's the only person I block and remove. But she always comes back with it. So that's why I know it's a bot. Because it's literally the same girl in every picture with a hundred different channels. And she's always, like, talking, you know, sexy. Uh, oh, really? It switched into that? And she used to always say, like... Nice, nice video with like she does all different types of stuff. She's, oh no, she does. She would be like, I anyone love looking you. for a date? Yeah, I love you. I need a man. Kiss me, stuff oh, like that. She said that to you. I will fuck her up. Hey, 
Hey. I will fuck. Hey. I told I you. I told you. You've already seen her titties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're getting that 12 year old's probably seen You've seen her titties <laughs> from a little dot this yeah, big. You probably enlarged it and it was all blurry from you enlarging it, but you did it anyway. Zoom, 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 <laughs> zoom. <laughs> um, get those on Instagram. We used to as get well. a lot of them on Instagram. We yeah. haven't in a long, like, not in a while. No, the ones we get now are the Pakistani knife companies. <laughs> And we get hell of those. Yeah, Breeze, it still shows up on my screen, so it must just be because it's it's our channel must be the only thing. But if you don't want to see my comments, Cheers. you can get rid of it. <laughs> I know for everyone else, you definitely can actually delete them. Mr. C, thank you, thank you. Thanks for all the great shows. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year thank and you. Happy Holidays to you too, Mr. C. Thank you very much. I appreciate all, every donation. I think the purpose of the bot in our comment section is to get, not honestly, I don't think it has anything to do with us. I think it has more to do with the fact that oh, man. it's a man-dominated yep. uh, area in the internet, knives, yep. and they're just trying to get one of you stupid suckers. It's not about us. It's about on. you fucks. It's about you guys. I guarantee it's because at least 10 of you motherfuckers. Clicked on that shit before. Not just clicked like, on it. You guys went and found her you channel. You were like, wait, are you real? Can you send me a video? She's <laughs> made comments like, uh, come check out my channel, stuff like that. Um, so, I guarantee some of you guys came there and she's like, oh man, I get all kinds of content from these yeah. these knives. I know. I'm going to keep fucking with them. Um, I get the Pakistani knife people on my Instagram as well. Yeah, it gets bad. Like, really bad. Like She's a tease. <laughs> she is a tease. Mark knows. Oh, how'd you know that? Mark knows. How'd you know? I'm reading his comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm, She's a tease. Mm -hmm. What did I say? <laughs> You're like, yeah, she is. <laughs> I <can tell. laughs> I remember that from last week. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, the Pakistani She's knife guys. She's got an OnlyFans. <laughs> I spoke about this last week. They come to our thing and try to sell us a knife. And I got so sick of it because I've talked to them. I have everything. And I got so sick of literally the same <laughs> knife company. So, like, when I click on the page, it's all the same knives. But it's always a different person. So I know, like, they're not making them. They're, like, working for a company that's selling these things all over the world, like, through the internet. Yeah. And they're always trying to be my friend. Hey, and they always start off, like knives. Yeah, no. No, nah, man. Do you like Damascus knives? Yeah, do you like Damascus knives? Say. It's always knives. Damascus knives. You like, but some of them are just like, do you like knives? And it's like, sometimes nope. I just want, My no. name is literally Neves. I nope. Do. I fucking hate them. That's what you should start saying. Yeah, but, uh, but they'll, ch they'll try to... Get me to come buy a knife, and I try to tell them. I've told them a million times, like, I uh, I don't buy knives now. Like that's all I say. I don't buy knives. People send me knives. They say, if you want to send me a free. Oh knife, yeah, that's right. I'll shit all this over. This conversation again. Yeah. The, I don't buy knives. Yeah. I'm a reviewer. Yeah. I don't, I don't buy, buy knives. shit. But I'm saying it like that because I'm sick of them asking me to buy a knife. I, like I don't buy knives. knives. That's all I'm saying. That's I don't a buy good answer. I like rusty knives. Send me your shittiest knife, please. Right. <laughs> well, so now I'm, I was saying I think last week or the week Ooh, before. Oh, I like free knives is a good response too. That's basically what I said. Yeah. I said I'll take a free you knife say it much and then more, I'll review uh, it. Yeah. Much, much more, more cocky. pompous. Cocky. Pompous. I like cocky. I like um, pompous. I'm gonna, though, probably order one now. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm gonna order one just to show all you guys how shitty a heat <laughs> tree can be on steel. Like, a lot of people, like, I've heard this a bunch of times now. Uh, but the heat treat doesn't matter. I know lots of people talk about how much the heat treat matters. And I know most of you guys, especially all my viewers, you guys know heat treat matters. But a lot of people stress in the community how it doesn't matter. I can show you how much it does by ordering one of those knives. Because you'll see. Like, I've even had good production knives that have shit heat treat. And you can't sharpen them. Go buy a gas station knife. Like, uh, what are those things called? An m -Tech. Go get an m -Tech and sharpen it. They are harder to sharpen than M390. They're harder to sharpen than any steel. Because um, a good steel, like M390 with a good heat treat, sharpens up really good. You just got to use the right stones, and it's easy. Like, I find M390, if I use diamond stones, it's just as easy as 14C28 iron or just as easy as S35VN. I just start with a low diamond grit and then move up the progression. It's very easy. Is that is that her? Is she now on her Instagram, popping up? No, yeah, no, it's not her. <laughs> uh, uh, Lavender Pants said something about lion knives. Have you ever heard of that one? Yeah. 
He said, do you think that they fall into that category? I don't know. It's not Lion one. Steel, but Lion. Oh, wait. Lion Knives. Yeah, probably. Click oh, on this it. one right here. He Click said the guy it. comes off almost as seems legit. Oh, no. Yeah, no. This ain't like what I'm talking about. Let's show him what I'm talking about. Well, this one, he at least has other pictures. Yeah, no. This isn't what I'm talking about. This guy looks legit. This guy looks fine. Um, we're talking about Scooter Packy Knives. PackyKnives.com. Uh... I don't know. I need to send you all a four hundred dollar D two knife. We have a four hundred dollar D two knife. Oh, that I'm keeping. CPM. I keep D2. meaning to say this. Uh, isn't a four hundred dollar D two knife just called a Medford? Um, Casey said. That's CPM uh, D two. It's not regular D two. Just let's calm down. Yeah. That literally. It's can I Benjamin. explain to you what that sounded like? That oh. literally sounded like when someone's like. Do you have blonde or else coffee? If I was like, it's not just blonde, it's Miranda blonde. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway. Um, it's not coffee, it's frappuccino. It's espresso. Uh, anyway, um, KC said that he's sending us uh, his knives or something. They'll be here around Christmas and that there's one I'm, I'm going to. Sounds like, awesome. That Thank I'm going to like. So, um, I'm excited. Benjamin said his wee practic is M390, about eight thousandths behind the edge. Crazy slicer, yes. Dollar Tree eight has a bomb ass heat treat. <laughs> Dollar Tree. Um, what, what, are you eight, what are you doing? Where'd it go? What? 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 Uh, what? You moved it. What? Just say the thing. Alien. There it is. All right, I moved it. Yeah, you did move it. This one's eight thousandths behind the edge too. <laughs> Super thin. That DX2 should be dropping here anytime. He had a Kickstarter for the for the Alien Knives DX2. Cansep Knives is the one OEMing the work or producing it. Woo! This thing is a crazy slicer. So thin behind the edge. Super deep hollow grind. This thing's a beast. That was the one where but very was easy like, to sharpen. Like the most hollow. Yeah, it's hollow, hollow super ever. hollow. Like more than like. Engineers even thought it was well, he physically possible. Yeah, they didn't think it was going to be because of the taper and how deep it goes. Like, it stays 8,000 thick for like that far, like very far up the blade. Gotta get me that DX2 for show. Yeah, it's pretty Does awesome. For show typically have accents over it. I was yeah, not aware for of show. this. For show. I never You have to read it like that. You That's have, to, you have to have accents over the letters? Well, not an accent. You just got to read it for sure. No, I, I meant the accents. What are you talking about? Oh, Is that the proper oh. way to spell for sure? I didn't know. I don't know. For show. For show. For show. For show. For show. For show. I've got a factory second PM2 and S30V that must have had one hell of a heat treat because it's magnetic. We had a knife that was doing that, but, wait. but it wasn't because of the knife. Remember the Kubi Ant Eater oh, used to be magnetic that's what you're as hell? About. I thought you were talking about when it I was sharpened. literally yeah. the blade to it the point where sense. we were like, "Is there a magnet instead of a detent?" Like that's what we were thinking because now, it's uh, the tip. Is it still? Can I tell you my theory? Is it still like that? I'm gonna get it and see. What's your theory? Okay, my theory is is that in the process of making them, they have a board or a thing that holds the the, the blades in on a magnet. So, like, say if I need to work on a knife, right, and I'm working on a hundred knives, I can take all the blanks and slap them to that magnet and hold them so that they stay up there and knock down on my shit. And then when I grab one, I can start working on it. That's my theory. Oh, man, so then, it's right there. Since it's being, or it's put on a magnet, the magnet is going to turn it into a magnet at least for a while. Or a long while. Eventually, it will lose its magnetic. What are you doing? Why are you what facing that way? That's that's aluminum. Aluminum? All you gotta do is do it on like this. Here, do it on this clip or something. But it, remember, it wasn't doing it very strong. No, at first it was. That was the thing. Something got stuck to it. I was like, what the? Here. Oh, wait, no, this might be magnetic. No, it's not, though, but so leave it out. No, this might be magnetic. Well, it didn't yeah, work. It's it didn't not, work, it's so it's not doing it no more, so it lost its magnetic. Now, when we use the belt, it, um, and, like, from the, the work sharp sharpener, things get magnetic, too. I don't know if it's, I think it's, yeah, it's definitely magnetic. I thought at first it was the friction was creating, um, static, but I think it's getting magnetic. Um, at least you're not hangry. 
True that. Um, I hope it's better than 2020. Can't wait to see what life does in 2021. D2 is better for EDC than S30V. Yes and no. I think it depends on where you live. You can definitely get it a lot cheaper. But some places it doesn't do good because it does. It has a not. It has a chance of rusting, especially if you don't keep up with your blades. But there's places like if you live around salt water and stuff, you should have a stainless. But D2 is fine as long as you keep up with your blades. Because product. All right, D2 was never supposed to be a production steel. It was supposed to be a custom maker steel. And that is why we were all begging for it when they weren't using it. Like everybody was like, oh man, fucking 8CR 13MOV. I wish they would just use D2. Everybody was screaming that. And then all the knife makers knew it. All the production companies knew that. So they all started putting D2 on everything. The thing is, is that they're not good at heat treating. Because the problem is, is that D2, I think it's within 50 degrees. So the temperature when they heat treat it has to be within a 50 degree range. On, or it won't do good. Like, it'll still cut. It'll still sharpen. But it's not going to perform at the level it could. Now, D2 done right has better edge retention than S30V. Um, it actually does. It actually has a higher edge retention than S30V, S35VN, but 98, 99% of all production companies do not heat treat it like that. So it actually cuts a lot less. It even cuts less than 14C28N. Chris Wolf got second place in the uh, Instagram beard. Oh, that's fucked up. You should have got number one. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying they, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Man. They don't know what they're Everyone talking about. Everyone was like, about. congrats. And you're like, that is oh, No, I'm saying congrats for second, but I believe. I second think is it, just the first loser is what he's trying to say. Chris. Yeah, I'm saying you should have <laughs> had first place. And I'm not, I'm saying from now, I, I, I want to see this guy with the beard. With the, the first beat. place beard? Yeah. It must be fucking iconic or something. What the hell? It must be like shaped and like sculpted into the shape of a fucking It must be or Jesus something. or something. Yeah. What, is, what is going on? What, it's, was Santa Claus there or something? That doesn't make any sense because I don't know if I've ever seen anybody with a more beautiful beard than Chris Wolf's. It was a setup. Yeah, that's what it was. It was definitely a setup. Lots <laughs> of setups in 2020, I'll tell you. Um... Holds an edge like crazy though. Which one? All right, I. F uh, he said he's got a D two from Sog that's hundred percent magnetic and it makes sharpening it super annoying. Yeah, I back. Yeah. But he said it holds an edge though. <laughs> Hold that edge though. For about um, two minutes, no, <laughs> Yeah, some steels would be. I think it's because of what I said. I think it's because they hang them from magnets. Um, this knife, I like D two. This Kubi ant heater seriously feels like there's a magnet down here though. The yeah, way the, the way the detent is, is. Yeah. It really like it. Like, it's ridiculous. It's like, like the way it's pulling in, it's it very like strong. A, a magnet. Very strong. Christopher Tanks, I've been watching for an hour. <laughs> Jared hasn't stopped flipping yet. Literally, right as you read that, you just hit stopped. I think, so, I think lies. That's and I, I took over. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you do a manic flip, though. Yeah, when I'm sitting here talking. Because I'm sitting here next to all these knives. But you, like I said before, I don't do that all day. I know she's going to tell you that I do when we're watching a movie. But... You do. Let me finish. And before bed. I'm going to do this again. Let me finish. Uh, but I don't do it with other people's knives. I do it with my own knives. Because well, no one I, thought you did it with other people's knives. Yeah, they do. I have other people's knives here. But I'm saying... Day? Will you let me finish? Maybe. I'm saying that I don't take other people's knives and flip the shit out of them all day because I'm worried that I'm that the detent will get weaker or like that I'll make this lock, the lock bar travel farther. Like I don't want to flip somebody else's knife and take a year of life off of it when it's not mine. So I don't do that with other people's knives. Now on the live, I'll sit here and flip knives, but on my own time, I use my, I flip my own knives, but I don't sit there and just do that. Like watching a movie, I'll do it. I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up. I'll flip it for three to five then minutes. Switch to your backup. Then I'll put it down for 10 minutes, then grab the backup. Flip that for five minutes. I don't know where minutes. that 10 minutes occurs. When does that happen? Every, every time. Uh, every five minutes. I don't know. Every five minutes. Can I finish? Can, Can I, I finish? finish? Can I finish? <laughs> Somebody, never mind. I'm not even the tables that. have turned. Can I finish? 
<laughs> Meaning, I'm normally the one who can't finish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jared had me open <laughs> knives now while watching. You okay? What'd that you was so weird. What'd I literally do? had it like. You didn't cut yourself, did you? Sort of. So, kind of. Halfway. Um, <laughs> It was a stab, not a cut. Oh. I had it like this and went to close it with my hand. Ooh, and yeah. it. You, have you ever had that happen where it pinches yeah. your meat? Oh, yeah. And yeah. It, put a hole in my hand but i could feel it just go in yeah. slowly so i was able to stop it luckily my hands they're made of leather so nothing really it did it did almost got to the bloody part so it's got pretty bad six layers not seven yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i stopped it though because i felt it uh, what hold on a second. is it we that does the heat treat for Civivi? yes so we makes all the Savivi knives. They should just make one big cut. company called Wavivi. Wavivi, Wavivi cut, because it's sand cut. Yeah, Wavivi cut. That sounds like a dope knife. A flipping your K two. Wavivi cut. Love. Oh, see, I almost Love did it again. The K2. It gets stuck like this sometimes, like just barely, barely out, and so it makes me want to go like this, but it it and it'll clip you. It'll grab my meat, so my when, lady meat. When I flip it, like sometimes. Like it'll stop like that. I always make sure it's the end. But sometimes it'll also it'll to do that. it'll pop out like that because if you hold the button too long, it'll pop, with any button back. any button lock it'll Some do that. Wavy. That's why you want to let it go when it gets about right there and let it just finish itself off. Yeah. Ooh, it <laughs> finish itself. Oh. Um, uh -huh. Don't do that. <laughs> Look, they both said Sin Weavy at the same time. Sin Weavy. They both had the wow. same thought. Damn. Lady meat. Yeah, I have lady meat. Demonetized. And it's right here on my hand. And it's stabbed. My lady meat is stabbed. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> um, Benjamin Tim. I'm about Cole to go name. play this game. Go ahead. Hmm. If that's what you want to do. I have to worry at seven. I didn't know that. What time is it? Oh, I still got a little bit. I have I less than twelve. I have less than twelve hours before I already have to be back to work, and I just got off. That sucks. That's shitty. It is shitty. I'm gonna go at nine. I'll leave at nine. You can top flip this. <sighs> you can take off at nine. At nine. Okay, bro. Yeah, I, I got zombies to kill. So. That's not even right. I know I normally don't do that. What? With it. I normally. What? What'd you do? What'd you I, do? I top flip this. But I normally. Maybe, I don't normally maybe just reverse Jeremy's flip it. Maybe referring to the unfair fact that I have to go back to work. Maybe it's not yeah, about. Yeah, maybe it knife. is. Maybe no. He, you're right. He probably was talking about that. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> got to flip the vet. Wait, the V. I don't know what that is. The V. The V. The v the the it's like a hiccup, but out of your... What happened, mind. Douglas? <laughs> Who does the best D2? Uh, Medford. Because they use CPM D2. And <laughs> yeah, they... we know from earlier. But, <laughs> and, and they are on a higher production level. They're more of a, um, a, uh, what's it called? Not a... I forgot about his time. Uh, what the heck? A mid-tech. They're more mid-tech, so you're going to get a better heat treat out of them, and they still use it. Now, a lot of companies that do mid-techs don't use D2 or CPM D2 because of the difficulty level. But he's got it down pat, and he says how easy it is. He likes D2. So since he's, he likes it and has tested it for so long, he does it incredibly well. So the performance you'll get out of that D2, you'll, you'll feel like it's a production level M390 or something because the like production M390 is done for the most part and on, from most companies, not the way it's, it's, it's potential is. Why? You know that's my live flicking night. Sorry, babe. You knew I'm that. sorry, babe. It's okay. But, I forgive you, but you did know that. I definitely uh, forgive you. Casey Tyler, thank you. Browse Blades also does CPM D2. It's awesome. There you go. There's another one. I've only tried one Browse Blade, so I can't speak on them. But I will say, though, that... Most companies don't do M390 or 20CV that good on a production level. And I'm talking about right now um, the 
I don't know, the Sam Ren news, the, you know, all the little, you know, Ontario, whoever, all the little companies. Oh, it's a Les George? V-E-C-P? Yes, you can donate, Benjamin. Um, yes, you can. Every time, again, I'll say it before I'll say it again, every time I read Les George, I think Les Paul guitar. I can't read it and not think that first. It's really annoying. If you're wondering how to donate, there's a money sign down right next to the chat where you type your words in. You hit that, and then you pick a sticker and, or whatever you want to say. Hey, guys, how's your week been? Week's been great. Listen, Lacey, that knife. Speak okay. for yourself. I've worked every day this week. I worked um, I worked every day, but and got off and did this stuff, but... Um, I did not work Monday or Tuesday, though, so. You lucky. Well, it, over there. I worked. I just didn't work at you the You worked distillery. at Neves Knives. Yeah. Ink. Um, Lacey, I, uh, I, the packages that I had sent out that I was worried about that didn't show up that literally took fucking three weeks finally got there. So, I don't know if they're back on track now. So, I'm going to mail your stuff out, um, in a couple days. I, I'm going to get that to you. I just didn't want them to lose it. I wanted to make sure it was going to get to you because I had three packages that I had sent out that was not showing up. And it didn't make sense. Like, they were supposed to show up within three days. Three weeks later, they finally showed up. So, I wanted to make sure that they were going to show up. I didn't want to mail it out and then you just never get it. And then you're like, yeah, these knives lied. I want a knife on the thing. They said they mailed it. Wink, wink, you know. You have receipt, you know, that you could just... Give her. Yeah, maybe I got the receipt and then maybe asked you her back, forged whatever. an entire receipt. Yeah, lots of different had things. Had them printed and said, fuck this. I want Yeah, I want my money it. back. Yeah. I spent all the money to get over to the post office to do that. To keep the knife that wor is worth that more. That is yeah. worth less than the ride itself, probably. Well, you don't know that. I could have been mailing other stuff. Well, why? Know. You're a fraud. Well, you, you don't mail anything when you're a fraud. Maybe just for that. Only to famous people so that, that they can. Right! <laughs> Casey Tyler! <laughs> The, ding, ding. the unicorn. So that's a good question. Not like it's a question. Unicorn. What is a good a unicorn knife? Most people would say the Rockstead. Um, most people would not. They would actually say the Orbit. That could be somebody's unicorn for sure. It looks like a unicorn, kind of. This one you can top flip too. Can what? What does it look like in the case? Put away somewhere far away. Um. That, wow, that worked. Yeah. Oh. I think there's a lot of unicorn knives. Because <laughs> I think it just depends on your budget. Because I'll tell you what, some of my unicorn knives don't even cost that much. Like the, what the hell is that knife called? The, the, um. Oh, man. Now I'm so mad at myself. The, um. Damn it. The field duty. The field duty. Oh, that thing looks so amazing. <gasps> Sorry, I just forgot that I could middle this. Oh, <laughs> I thought you hurt yourself. No, I didn't. Ever did. handled a concept pelican? No, I have not. Uh, just got one today and can't open the thing. Only has thumb studs. Hold on a second. <laughs> you can't open the thing, but it has thumb studs. I don't get it. So. It has too strong of a detent, and you can't open it. It's a frame lock, right? The Pelican is a frame lock. Keep your fingers off of the frame. Make sure you're not holding the frame, because you might be locking yourself from opening it. The Norseman or the Arius is my unicorn. On Instagram right now, somebody is giving away a pristine um, <laughs> Norseman. If you... Uh, I, man, I forget who it was. Chris Wolf's the one who sent me the thing, or linked me. I forget who it was. That's um, giving it away. Lavender pants, me. yes, it definitely has to have a top flipper or a front flipper Ooh. to be a true unicorn. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Huh. I don't have any front flip. Oh, no, I do. I have just this one right here, and that's actually lavender pants. Look! Unicorn! That's a unicorn, yeah. Actually, that makes more sense to be a unicorn, uh, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like right it's on top. It's a staff Norse. What about uh, the, uh, the, the one? Yeah, Bree said, I was told it's a safe queen. And yes, a, a unicorn what? knife could be considered a safe queen. A safe queen is a knife like that. 
it's worth so much to you that you're not willing to use it. Like, you want it, you get it. Cool, bro. But also, a unicorn is considered uh, an object Thank that's, you, Benjamin. Sorry. Thank you, Benjamin. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was my fault. I'm sorry, <laughs> Benjamin. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Narwhal Did you do it? Yeah, I said cool, oh. bro. But a unicorn also can be considered an object that is unattainable. So it's an un like a unicorn. You'll never see one, right? So that's what it means in reality. It means a knife that's unattainable to you. So in my opinion, a unicorn knife can be any value that's more than you can ever afford. So something that you're like, there's no way I'll be able to afford it. So that's my unicorn. Okay. <clears throat> Lavender Pants asked me a question that I want to answer. He asked me which one out of the two Swags knives that I like better. From the, you listening? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was reading. Nope. You got a bounce, so I was like, well, "Who's bouncing?" I me mean, in a few minutes, but. Oh yeah, I see. Okay, go ahead. I don't. Sorry. I don't know if that was referencing me. Yeah, probably. It's only eight fifty-five. Shit. Five more shit. minutes. Sorry. Let like, me, get the fuck let out of here. Let me exist for five shit. more fucking minutes. No, go ahead. Fuck. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Probably wasn't even talking to you. <laughs> I don't, uh, either way, I, oh, I don't sorry. care. Um, but so the two swags knives, um. Ooh, they, so, Very different. my first thought when you asked that was, I like the purple, what is this one called again? The Swayback. The Swayback. My first thought when you said that was, I like the Swayback better, but then, now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like, and this is going to be a weird way to think about it, but this is what happens when you use every single one of your knives, because by the way, I, I did take this to work and use it, um, gently, uh, the first time kind of. ever first taking time a knife ever. to work that was somebody else's is lavender pants. Is thank yeah. you, lavender pants. Um, so I did, I did take it, and I didn't put it in anything sticky, but um, I did use it quite a few times, and I, I know this is a weird way to say it, but from a user perspective, with both the knives deployed for use already pre-deployed, I probably like the um, Malaya Malay. butter. Um, I just, it fits in my hand so damn perfectly. The, uh, the Isn't there the only swell, a three-finger knife for you? Three? I mean... You can get your four on there. Yeah. Five. Oh, my four is on there and comfortable. There's space, but, like, it's yeah. on there. Yeah, you got leverage. Yeah. Um, the, the Malia, though, it literally, like, this, this swell in the back of the handle, like, in the swoop up here, it, like, locks my hand into you place. Like, you're it. not getting this thing out right. of my hand. Right. Um, and, uh, I really like it, but, and I love the thumb sun action. Like, holy it is shit. Good. Yeah, the thumb sun right. action. For, even me, for a little knife with now, such big hands, it's really good. Thank God it has the thumb studs. Because what I will say is, I do not really like the way the front flipper operates. Something about where it hits my thumb bothers me, like, in a painful way. Like, it's fine, but there's a certain way that when I do it, that it rolls over, it like, almost like rolls over the skin next to my nail and like hurts it. Yeah. Like, almost pinches it in a way. Like, it's just something with the positioning and the jimping. Um, when I do it with my left hand, that's not as much the case, so I don't really know like why it's like that in my right hand. Um, so all in all, I would probably say... This is a more practical knife for me. I absolutely love the action for the thumb studs in particular. And uh, lock bar access is relatively good. And I've actually never had a small knife with this good of ergos before. So I definitely can appreciate that. Now, the swayback, uh, I like the thumb stud action. Not quite as good, but almost as much as the other one. Flipper tab action is perfect. The button lock is smooth. The thing I don't like is the open hand ergos are a little weird. They're just a little weird with this dip in the back. It's like unfilling. Lavender Pants says the way to hold it is in the pinch grip like this. But when you have a tiny ass hand, no, I it literally fits on that I'm bitch. saying for a big hand, I agree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the for way sure, I hold sure. it. And you let, literally keep the swell right here in your, pushed into your palm yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. And it does cut really good. Now... This one, though... But but let me just sorry, say, though, ahead. because the point is is that if you literally have a small enough hand, it it locks into yeah, place. Right. Locks. Leverage. 
and like my hand could never slide forward on this. Right. It does. Like I can yeah. actually like use it with some serious leverage outside of just see for me to do a, a pinch grip with it, it's like not comfortable at all. No. I would never hold it like that. That I palm can't. swell thing we were just talking about. Yeah. I was using this thing today for utility cuts. And it's kind of the same way where this part right here sits right in my palm and my middle finger wraps around right there and I use it in the pinch grip. Wait, it has jumping on the front flipper. He said it needs it. I'm confused. What? He said, yeah, I don't front flip it. It needs jimping on that front flipper for one. I don't know if you're talking about this knife. He's not talking about that. Um, but this knife, though, it the utility cuts, man, this thing does. It's not super thin behind the edge, but it's got a very thin blade, so it cuts very well. But the utility cuts, it's the way the shape of the handle is, being the sway back. You really get a lot of leverage in that tip, and man, does it cut really good for utility cuts. I'm, I was testing this thing today because I got the review coming real soon, and wait, yeah, and it cuts really good. Yeah, it's so comfortable in my hand. Like, it literally feels good to just sit here and hold it and do nothing, just the way it fits. If the sway back had a thicker blade, I might pick it, but the more... See, that's the beauty is that it has a thin, thin. blade. Yeah, because that if it was thicker... It wouldn't, it wouldn't cut as good as it does because it cuts good because it has a thin blade. So that's why I like it. Oh. I know it's a little weird that the handles are thicker, but it just gives you more leverage because this ain't going to break. I mean, it's not the type of knife you, you're going to... I know why this but, bothers me. Why? The, the thing. He said it needs it on the top, the jimping. That's oh. what it is. If there was jimping right here, I could catch on the top like this, like the way I can with the and slide back a little bit yeah. what's happening is i'm putting all the pressure on the front with the side of my finger and it's hurting my finger yeah. because that's a weird place to put pressure on your finger you're right, right. that's what the problem is you want is. it more like the mechanic so that's my only thing yeah oh my god if it was that so yeah, i think it feels good um and i just push it right oh. be right in front of it but because your hand is one giant I palace know. you don't feel anything i know that i understand stan all right, I'm going to go. I love you guys. Right, I'm going to uh, go chill before I actually have to go to bed. Thank you, everyone, for uh, the donations. Yes, and, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. All right, go get Peace. your game. I'll I'm going to go kill minute. some zombies. I'll be done in about 15 minutes. All right, guys, now that, now that we're alone. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Um, Rockstead time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, fuck. Let me move all this stuff here. Organized. Scoot up a little bit. All right, the new Finch Holiday has a blade shape like the Swayback without the terrible Swayback handle. That's the one thing about it is that the handle is a little weird. But I found out, though, using it. Also, the liner thing right here it makes you want to hit it like a liner lock. You really, when you get it, you literally always do this. But besides that, using it, it actually works very well. Because, like I said, it's just your palm. Like, this is where your palm goes on, and you hold it like a pinch grip. And this back part sits right there in the crook of your hand. It feels really solid. Part two of this stream brought to you by Rockstar. We'll pull out the Rocky. We'll pull out old Rocky. Yeah, you will. Yes, I will. But yeah, I am going to have to, because uh, I feel a couple little nicks in the blade. I'm going to have to figure out a way to strop it better. Now, like I said, I didn't strop it too much because I don't want to leave any scratch marks on the blade. But... I do need to try the w the way they say to straw. I'm grabbing the sway back next. Awesome. I think you'll like it. It's uh, it's different, which is cool though. I think it's nice to have different things because I notice sometimes like a different knife that uh, I don't norm. Okay, put it this way: like I don't like Persian blades, right? I I just don't. I had this one Persian here, and the way the handle went. So it had the Persian blade, but the way the handle went, it went like forward. So when you were holding it, the blade was actually going down. So you were actually always, the blade was always facing what you were cutting. Always. 
and it happened to cut really good. And it impressed me. It made me respect Persian blades so much more than I ever have. The reason why I always hated Persian blades was because the damn tip goes up in the air. How the fuck am I supposed to use that type of tip? Unless I'm stabbing somebody, right? Because the tip's going towards something I'm stabbing at. Without stabbing something, it just doesn't make sense. Because the point of it is to slice and cut, like say, like to skin a deer, right? Kind of like a, um, a clip point. You know, the, it has all belly, so you're not going to poke through the skin that you want to save. That was the point of it. Um... You know, or to have that type of belly. But when it's shaped right and the handle's shaped right, it actually works really good for cutting. I don't know how anyone could ever try to sharpen a rock set. That'd be terrifying. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what I'm going to do if I'm going to... Eventually, I'm going to have to sharpen it, right? Because I don't know if I'll be able to send it to Japan. Supposedly, Japan says when I went on their site, they said you can, they'll sharpen it. They'll do everything, anything to it. Refinish it, whatever. But I have to pay for the shipping, okay? But I probably could do it. The scariest part is the plunge, because that I, because it's it's rounded. So I would have to flatten that, and then it wouldn't look natural. I don't know. It definitely would be scary. I think I could do it, but it would be scary. It'd be like, um, I, I don't know. It'd, it'd be scary because I don't, I don't want to, to scratch the surface and then not be able to get the, the scratch pattern out. Unless if I said, F it, fuck it. And I just said, it's going to have a scratch pattern now. No more polish. I don't know. Got a sea snake. Oh, that's awesome. And boy, is it thin. Yeah, the sea snake. Um. This one, man, I just stropped this thing, but before I started stropping it, man, it had so many nicks in the blade. These things hone and strop back so good. You can, Man, I've sharpened it once, and I've used the heck out of it, and it just keeps stropping and honing back, so I'm going to see how far I can take it. I'm going to do a video on the steel, AARPM9, and the good and bad about it. I'm going to end up doing that. The good and the bad. Um, I sent that Malaya to Kara, basically brand new in the box. I wanted to see if she would like it and what she thought of the A. She so far likes it. She did take it to work. So she's uh, she'll give you some more feedback after she uses it a little bit more. I did sharpen up. I did sharpen it up because when it came back from work, she did uh, she didn't have the blade all tore up, but it was all sticky and nasty. It's all clean now with a nice fresh edge. And uh, I want to see if this steel is going to be, because they're both AARPM9, right? How comparable they are. Because, like, if this one's really good and then say I'm not getting the same type of results, then something's up. Then that means it's like a shot in the dark, you know? So I, I'm going to see what it's like. And that's what my video is going to be about. Like, how does it compare across the board? Because if one person has good results and then, say, another knife has bad results, well, then most likely they're not being consistent. It's their own steel, so they should be consistent. Damn it, Kara. What? You left me empty. Is it decent? Um, what do you mean? This? I don't know what we're talking about. I have destroyed the finish on on a couple of knives bef before watching Jira. I have destroyed the finish on a couple of knives. I have destroyed the finish on a lot of knives. A whole lot of knives. But when you're learning to sharpen and uh, also if you only have one knife, right? When you have 50 knives, it's easy to... To, to keep up with the edge, to not have to sharpen it. It's easy to, to not damage it. But when you only have one work knife, one or two, maybe even four work knives, you're going to mess your knives up. So you're going to ruin the finish. You're going to do everything to it. It's going to get messed up. <sighs> CPM bullshit one. CPM BS one. I sent you guys a Patreon message. If you were interested in seeing a few more knives, just let me know. 
Awesome, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will, uh, I'll check it out after this. I'll meet you back right after this. Um, honestly, I was doing so much today. I didn't even get a chance to even check any of the messages on there or on email. I answered the messages on Instagram, but doing that film earlier, and that's what I was talking about. I was hoping that video would have gotten more views because I put a lot of work on that video. So, We'll see if I keep up with doing videos like this. Obviously, I can't do every single video like that, the way I'm doing these reviews like I did here, um, and also the last three videos, I think. But I'm hoping to get better quality videos from here on out, from the last three videos forward when it comes to reviews and or other videos. I want to not only teach more things and show more things, but to make it more entertaining, to make it more visually appealing. I'm trying to get my watch time up. That's another thing. If I make a 20 minute video and my average watch time is only four minutes, right? That means I'll, some people watched it to the end, but the majority of people fast forwarded through the parts they don't care about. That means they probably said, okay, from the beginning, he says bang, this and that. Usually says thank you to somebody, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward through all that stuff. And then they'll get to the next part. So now, I don't do anything at the beginning. The beginning, it goes right into the video. Sometimes I talk a little bit for a second, but a couple of the videos, I literally, literally was like bang, knees, knives, you know, and then I went right into showing sharpening and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to try to make it to where I want to get it where my watch time goes up. That's it. Um, and I feel like if it's more entertaining and more visually appealing than people will. And if they're learning, because that's another thing. Um, my watch time is usually higher on the videos when I'm teaching something or showing something. So I watch them most, if not all. Yeah, I try to, uh, you know, I, I'm everybody fast forwards right there's always going to be videos that's like okay i have 10 minutes to 20 minute video let's watch it but you skip a part or something or maybe you you only watch it so far everybody's going to do that so anybody who says they watch every single video all the way through they're lying unless if you only watch the videos at night or something because that's when i'll watch the entire video at night or in the morning not usually in the morning but sometimes and at work at work I can just listen to it. I don't watch it. I listen. So I can play it all the way through and never have to skip anything because, you know, I'm not in a rush. I'm literally wanting long content. But um, I don't like to do 20-minute videos, but a lot of videos wind up being 20 minutes because I'm putting, I'm teaching stuff in there. Like with this video, I showed how to sharpen a big belly knife. I, um... I took the knife apart, got pictures of all the internals. I explained what a detent and a detent ramp was. Um, I got deep in on the action. Um, what else did I do? Oh, yeah, I showed cutting. I showed the benefits and the negatives of a big belly knife. So I showed, like, cutting, like, the problems with it and then the benefits with it. But if you skip, you might not see that stuff. And I sh showed a video of it. So I actually took a video of it cutting to show the benefits and negatives of it. Um, usually listen on the road, Mark. Yeah, that's probably a good place to listen to the whole thing, too. Lacey Marie, that's because people don't want to learn something new. <laughs> we always watch from the start to end. I hate moving around. It confuses me. That is so true. That is, so, um, like, because you'll think, you'll be like, oh, I just want to get to the action. You'll try to fast forward. You'll go right past the action. Uh, that is a thing when you don't know, like, some people like Nick Chappaz has it in order, which I like. And I thought about doing a system like that myself. That's why I kind of started doing the good and the bad. The thing is, is that when I do the bad, I'll also do some good in there too. And I always try to finish it off with good. If the knife's really good. If the knife is bad, then I'll just finish it off with bad. But it is nice having categories to where people know where the categories are at. But my problem is, is I'm not just looking at the knife. And I'm not saying Nick is. I'm not saying that at all. And But a lot of reviewers, they're getting so many knives, they don't 
work in a place where they use their knives. I'm lucky enough that where I work, I fucking use my knife all day. And when I come home, I can use my knife at home. I have reasons to use my knife. And I sharpen, I strop, I work on knives, you know, I do all that stuff. So there's going to be parts in the video that what I did with the knife, I want to show. I want to explain. I want to throw in a video of it. I want to teach something on that. And I can't do that if, or I can't do every knife the same. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, just because I cut with this and sharpen it and um, possibly got a video of cutting with it doesn't mean I took it apart, right? So if I have a takedown part, where would it go? Because I, I didn't take it apart. So unless if you do the exact same review every single time, it's hard to put things in categories or order. I literally have to do every review the exact same. Um, I usually listen. I, did it back up? Do you get samples from work? Yes, I do. I get, um, I got a bottle. I have two bottles right now. I got some lemonade, vodka, and I got some whiskey. Three-year-old whiskey. I think it's, uh, I think it's straight. It might be maple. I don't know. Yeah, I can get pretty much whatever I want from there. Jared doesn't live by the rules. <laughs> I also like to watch right before bod keep a ta tab yeah I always watch before bod always I'm literally watching content before bod my problem is is I like watching knife videos because I love knives but I'm starting to pull I'm starting to find that I'm pulling away from them just a little bit and it has nothing to do with the the people it has everything to do with myself one, I don't want to get tired of it. Two, I don't want to take something from their video. Unless if it's a video on a knife that <clears throat> isn't new. So, like, say if it's an older knife or something, yeah, I might watch a video on it so that they can teach me something. You know, like, oh, the maker lives in Orlando. I don't know. Mark, thank you, bud. Just getting home from work. See you guys on the next live. All right, Mark, thank you. I appreciate it, bud. Thank you for all the donations. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, and also another thing is that I find myself in, and like I said, I don't mean nothing for I'm just being honest, right? I find myself getting upset, like, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to dislike any reviewer out there. I really don't. I want to have love for all the reviewers, and I do. I like all their videos. I try to only talk good things. I recommend their videos, but sometimes I watch, man, and I'll get irritated. Like, uh, they'll be talking about something, and I find, like, a, 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 a voice in my head saying, how the fuck would you know? You didn't cut nothing with it. Like, I don't want to be like that either. I really don't. But I can tell, right? It's like, I'll hear this. This is what I'll hear. I've been using this for a long time, and you can see it's got a factory edge. And I'm thinking in my head, the fuck you did? You didn't fucking use that thing for a long time. Used it on what? Paper? Paper towels? Like, what are we talking about? So, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that guy. I really don't. I want to be the guy that, you know, loves everybody. And so I just find myself backing up from some of the reviewers and uh, not watching so many reviews. I'd rather want to go see their content when they have something that I, I want to see. Because I do love them all. I love, I, I love the community. I love everybody in the community. I mean, but it's not hard to call bullshit. Um, dude, do you sog knives? I do not sog knives. I, oh, wait. No, you know what? I do sog knives. I do sog knives. And because sog is doing better, I, I have got to give sog credit because before the Terminus... And before the newer stuff that they started doing, SOG went downhill. Like, seriously downhill. Then they revamped. Like, they completely went through their entire shop. I heard they fired a lot of people. I heard they got a whole new crew of QC. I heard that they, like, literally cleaned house. And that's why they're not even wanting to be called SOG no more. Because they know SOG wound up coming with a bad reputation. 
people considered SOGs, they started thinking of SOGs like Gerber because their knives were becoming Gerber. And then once that Terminus came out and their new line of knives with the XR lock, they're fit, they're finished, they're steel, they're the strength, the build quality, everything went up. So I give them a massive amount of credit. Any company that does that, 100% gets, you know, has got to, you got to give credit where credit's due because look at all the companies that won't stop doing shit. Like CRKT, Gerber, um, you know, you know all the rest. I can't give them credit. All they do is shit. And then they charge outrageous prices and they're still using HCR, you know, the steel HCR, but they're charging, um, S30 prices. What? And then the fit, the finish is just crap. They got blade play, lock failure. Their screws are stripped from the factory. Look at the last video that um, Nick Shabazz just did. He just did a Gerber, and it had a, a screw that was broken in it. You sent a fucking Gerber. Come on, like, think about that. They sent the knife to Nick. I think they sent it to him. I might, I might have missed who sent it to him, but I think Gerber did, I think. But the point is, is that he thinks it came like that from the factory. You, if, if you're going to send something to a guy like Nick Chavez, he's already saying that it's probably the best one that came out of the shop. And he says that because you know they're going to double check it and make sure everything's perfect because they want the best review possible from a guy that has a following like that. So if they send him a fucking one of the broke screw... That means that you're probably going to get three broken screws. <laughs> Critical error and almost seemed like it was a joke. Exactly. I mean, it's it blows my mind sometimes that they're, they're still doing. Like, th this is where I'm going with this, is that five years ago, they're doing the same thing. Things grow. So, like, say, if last year was D2, this year's 14C28 on if you're still using the same stuff the companies were using 10 years ago and charging premium prices for it and still using fit and finish that shit, come on. I, I would never recommend a knife like that. I can't. I can't with a good heart. I just can't. But when, when they do, do good quality. And if I fi see it, then they kind of like that um, the CRKT Pilar. I said that the one I had at that time, that was a good representation of what it should be. But the one I got was shit. They just don't care. No, they don't care because you know why they don't care? Because they're, we, we were not their, the people they're selling to. They're not trying to sell a knife to us. They're trying to sell a knife to the guy who walks through Walmart and is going fishing and needs a knife. They're trying to sell to the guy that's walking through Menards and needs a pocket knife for the week. And it won't last past the day. <laughs> He's going to break it on the first day. That's their people. That's who they're selling that knife to. That guy doesn't realize that he can order a knife for the same price 10 times the value. Literally 10 times the value for the exact same price. And that guy doesn't know that, though. And that guy wouldn't know it if he's seen it. Unless if he had it in hand. Um, I do have a little Gerber Dime Multi-Tool. It's actually pretty good for what it is. I'm not saying they don't make anything good. I, I, I hope nobody's taking me like that. I'm saying the majority of what they do. I haven't... I've personally never had a Gerber knife that I thought was any good. Never. Not once. Um... But I'm not saying they don't have it. I just haven't seen it. And then if I did see it, then that's one. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I could find a good uh, MTech, right? I might find one MTech that's like, damn, this is actually pretty good. But does that take away the thousands of pieces of shit that I've seen? No, it doesn't. I've got a Gerber multi-tool on my desk at work. I'd rather go in the shop and get a real tool. I've had like 10 years. It's like I just bought it yesterday. Um, You know, there's going to be those tools that you're always going to need. And that's that where they fit. They fit in a work drawer. 
where you need a knife, you pry with it, you bend something, you, you maybe cut something if it'll fucking cut. But you don't care if it breaks. That's that knife. And I'm not saying that there's no good ones, and I'm not saying they're not useful. I've got a broken one right there. <laughs> um, I had it. I used, I bought it. I was working. Uh, I was doing custom windows. I was building and um, putting in custom windows for skyscrapers and buildings and stuff. And uh, I needed a knife. It was before I started doing this channel. And I was on the, or I, I don't know if I was on the way to work, but either way, I just picked up a Gerber from uh, Menards. I was like, fuck it. I was like, I just need uh, something. I, I can't go to work without a pocket knife. Picked it up, snapped the blade that day. That day the blade broke. I wound up putting it to the grinder and grinding it into a razor. <laughs> oh, you have to go back decades to find a good Gerber, like 40 years back. Yeah, and I know that they probably have a couple good fixed blades. I think fixed blades is a good place for them. Because fixed blades are easy to do. There's no moving parts. It's just a sheet of steel, sharpened. As long as it has a good heat treat, you know, good grip, that it'll work. And for what you use a fixed blade for, it's perfect. That's a good spot for a Gerber, and I bet they have some good fixed blades. I can almost, I bet money that they have good fixed blades. Um, yeah, the fastball. That's that's when I seen them trying, right? So when I seen that, I was like, holy shit. They're actually stepping up. They had good materials on it. I think it was titanium. And I forget what steel it was. S30V or M390. I don't remember. But the point is, is they had good materials. And I thought, good for you, Gerber. Good for you. The price was a little more than I would have wanted. But it was like, okay, whatever. You know. But this is the problem I have now. It's Gerber. That's the problem. Is that I won't buy, I won't spend that money and say, you know what, you know what, I want to see if this fucking thing's any good. And I'm just going to crumple, let's see, you know, I'm not going to do that. I, I want to know that I'm getting good quality. Like if I buy we Civivi, um, even Zero Tolerance most of the time, Hinder, Spider Co., um, many, many, many knives. I'm, I got a really good chance that it's going to come damn good. Do you know what I mean? I have a really good chance. Now, what's the chances of a knife that knife company that makes lots of horrible mistakes, huge QC issues, that they're going to do a good knife now? And trust, it's like, then it's like, trust me, buy it. It's $150. You can usually get this same thing for $100 over here. But we want you to buy it for $150. Trust me. It's like, no, I'm not going to trust you. Uh, you know, if you keep doing it, and I hear great things after a while, but they stopped right there. I don't think they did another one. Like, meaning they didn't do a, a fastball two and then a speed ball and then balls. You know, they just stuck with that one. They might have did good. I don't know. I have never tried their automatic knives. Are they any good? Like the 06 auto. The one that broke for me was an auto. Or maybe, no, it was assisted. I don't know. And assisted these days? Come on. I know there's a huge market for them. I feel like I'm just fucking ranting right now. <laughs> oh, needs not rant. I know there's a huge market for assisted knives, and that's why a lot of companies still do them, but, but damn it. Detents. Look, look at this. Let me find a knife. And I'll find a cheap knife. Cheap knife. Okay? This thing's under $40. See that detent? There's no assist on this. Okay? Let me find an even cheaper knife. Um, oh, any of these knives. I got tons of cheap knives. They, they're all over there, most of them. But You get my point. You can get phenomenal action you don't need an assist bar to me what a, an assist bar does is two things it does it makes it to where they don't have to put a lot of work in right they don't have to get their detents down they don't have to make sure that their detent locks in the hole good they they don't have to do any of that so that takes away work 
cheaper. Then they, they're hitting the market for the people that go like this. They get the knife and they go, ooh, it's an automatic. It's not an automatic, but that's what they think in their head. And they're like, ooh, I want that one because it's an auto. They don't realize that that's actually cheaper because a lot of people don't know knives. So they go to Kmart or Kmart don't even exist anymore. <laughs> I'm saying Kmart like there's still Kmarts. Um, Walmart or whatever. And they pick up a knife and they think that that's better than because they're used to this. This is what those people are used to. Those people are used to knives that go like this. And they have to take two hands. They don't realize that the majority of knives flip like a dream you don't need an assist I, I understand an auto because an auto is a button I understand the want or need for an auto because it's a button and a lot of people like for self defense or for whatever reason or people just like autos you know you might not want to to have any chance that it's not going to open. You don't, you know, you want to be able just to push that button, use it, and then closing it isn't the big deal. Getting it open is a big deal. That's where an auto fits in my mind. Like, if, I, if I'm fighting or something, right, I need a knife fast, I don't care about closing it because closing is the least of my worries. Do you know what I mean? Um, I have never tried their, wait, why am I backed up so far? Um, they're good for an emergency, right? Um, it's definitely nice to check out a knife at a store. But I do. What's weird is that I check out knives at the store, even if they're shit knives. Um, but my local knife store absolutely never matches prices or puts anything on sale. So I always buy online because it's almost always cheaper. Always. Like I go to like Bass Pro Shop. I'll never buy a knife. <laughs> But I'll look at them, and the guy who's working behind the counter, oh, he's working hard today. Because I'll have him grabbing everything. And then what's funny about it is he has no idea what he's talking about, and I know that. But he's working that department, so he should. But he thinks he does. And what's funny is he'll try to tell you, and I'm, I'm being funny right now. I know if I sound like I'm being ridiculous and talking shit. And I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to sound arrogant. Um, cause I, you know, I don't really think like that. I know the guy doesn't know knives and I know he doesn't need to, but it's funny because he'll think he knows a lot about knives and he doesn't realize how little he actually knows. And I know that's an arrogant way to think. I'm not trying to think like that, but I'll have him grabbing knives and showing me knives. And I don't sit there. I, I think one time I acted like that where I felt like I was teaching him knives, but usually I don't do that. I just, you know, let them think they're teaching me something. Um, there was a couple times, though, I walked in. I just had a great conversation with the guy because the guy actually was interested in learning knives or at least acted like he was. Maybe he was just trying to get that sell or sale. Um, assisted knives were okay when they first came out, right? Because of the novelty and when they stopped making it a felony to have a switchblade. Yeah, and I think there is a place for them. It's a good, it's good business for the 13-year-olds that want a pocket knife that think it's an automatic. Or the guy who, or the girl or whatever, that, that's not good with a detent. Even though a detent is so easy to use, you just got to push it and it'll open. But... People are so used to that not working great that they think that uh, if they want to open it every time very fast, they need an assist. Good luck, Ian. See you in for what? Ian, got to go ahead. All right, Ian. Got to go ahead to the Kmart. See you down there later. <laughs> you guys are all funny fuckers. Uh... Uh, I've argued with the workers because they acted like I didn't know about knives. I know. I know. I, I, I didn't argue with them, but I've literally had, like, oh, I had this guy. He was behind the counter, and he pulled out the knife and then told me, I think it was 8CR, and he was telling me how great it was, how great this, this is supreme steel. It has extreme edge retention. And he's telling me all this shit, and I'm thinking in my head, like, oh, my God. 
I can't sharpen this deck of worn cliff. I'm getting frustrated. All right, I'm going to help you right now because I know you've been frustrated with this, so I'm going to show you right now. Um, it's only going to take a second. So, everybody, pay attention. Let me find a good... Ex I guess I could just use this. Okay, so <clears throat> it's basically the same thing as this. There's two edges. Okay? One edge, two edge. Oh, you know what? This is a better example. I'm sorry. There we go. The big one. One edge, two edge. It's basically the same thing you have with that DECA. Look at it the same. Let's say this is my sharpening stone. Okay? I'm going to sharpen this first flat part first. So I'm going to sharpen it. Just that part. Then, I got some stuff on it. Then I'm going to sharpen until I get a burr. Now, you can flip and sharpen this side. Don't sharpen the second part. Sharpen this side till you get a burr all the way over, till it folds over to the other side. Then, do the next part, that, that other angle. Sharpen that side till you get a burr on this side. Flip over, sharpen that side till you get a burr on this side. Then, move to your next stone. And your next stone, repeat. Sharpen this angle. Don't sharpen them at the same time. If I go from here and sharpen to here, and you see? If I sharpen from here and go all the way across and then sharpen this, I will ruin this, this point right here. I have to marry these two edges together. And I do that at the end. So after I sharpen this part, then this part, or actually this, you, you can do it also like that. So you can sharpen this part first, then move to right here and just sharpen this part and then flip over and do it. You can do that. But the point, the point I'm trying to make, sharpen this angle and this angle separately. Do the, the, the flat part right here. So like if I'm going to strop it, put it this way. If I'm going to strop it, I'm going to strop just this part first. So I'm not touching this part of the edge. I'm just doing the this part right here. Then, I'll do this part second. Flip over. Do this part. Can't see. Then, the top. So, you want to do that. Then at the end, the very end, when you've got all the way to your, uh, or say, at the end of the stone, you've got the burr all the way across, you marry the edge by doing one, 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 one. One swipe. Well, it's going to go this way, though. One swipe. 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 And what you're doing is you're blending that edge to make this tip. Watch my marrying your edges video. I have. It's called marrying your edges. Watch that. It'll help you learn how to sharpen a tanto. Also, I just sharpened a tanto. Because I know that's a, called the Warncliffe or something. I think it's the Warncliffe. But it's a tanto, essentially, because there's two angles. So think about it like sharpening a tanto. Watch any sharpening tantos videos, and you'll learn how to sharpen that knife. Um, does it matter if it's a compound grind? No. No, it does not. Like Just like this one, this is a compound grind. Same concept. I'm going to sharpen this part first. You know, like this edge first. Then after this part's sharp, or after I get the burr on the other side, after I'm done sharpening this side, then I'll move up and do this separately. You have to sharpen it like you're sharpening two knives. This is one knife. This is your second knife. And then, in the end, you marry the edges together to make this little point. Which is going to happen anyways. Through the sharpening, you're going to have the tip there. It's just, you're basically just making the, the knife look like the edge just goes all the way around, kind of. Or like the grip pattern kind of matches up. Marrying your edge is basically for, because sometimes this part will start pushing over to, like, farther down the knife. So...
Like I said, watch my marrying your uh, the edges video. It'll explain it. I don't know what that means. Brazier print is going to ruin it, not me. I'm just using precision adjust. Okay, if you're using the precision adjustable, um, that you shouldn't have no problems. Just do one edge at a time. Um, or if you have a fixed angled system, like in the top part, is 18 degrees and the bottom is 23 degrees per second. Wait, hold on a second. I'm trying to understand what that means. Um, how do you sharpen the top swedge of a knife like a Randall Model 1? Uh, the top swedge of a knife. I don't know what a Randall Model 1 is. Give me a second, Kirk, and I'll look that up. Um, the top part is 18 degrees per side. I don't know why it means to me. Um, okay, Ethan. Um, let me, uh, but if you have a fixed angled system, just figure out the angle. And if it's two different angles, so, like, this is thicker than this. Okay, this is very thin. So, I could do the same angle across, right? I could do, say, 17 degrees per side. I could sharpen this part of 17 degrees and this part of 17 degrees, but my bevel will be bigger up here. So, what I would do is I would go, say... 17 degrees per side right here and then say 20 degrees per side right here to make them match they don't have to match though it's not that big of a deal if it's a dual grind i mean a lot of times people expect a dual grind to to have a thicker and thinner edge you know it's just the way it is kind of like this oh no this one isn't like that i'm sorry is it no i don't think so it is thicker up here, but I matched them, so it doesn't count. All right, let me look at this. What what was that knife called? The Randall Model 1. Give me one second, guys. Everybody stay here. I'm going to come back and everybody will be fucking gone. You assholes. Randall Ooh. Model Okay, let me look at the images. Oh, the top swedge is sharpened on that? I can't see it. My pictures suck. If the top swedge is sharpened on that, you got to sharpen it with... If it's recurved, I can't really tell. I'm getting a couple different pictures, but I'm guessing it's this one. So, okay, so it looks like it's long. Like, I'm guessing it's like this long of a swedge. I don't know. But if it is, then sharpen it just like you would the belly of a knife. Just think about it like that. But the opposite, because it goes like this. Um, you're doing it the exact same way. Just sharpen this part first. Let me get a buoy. Sharpen this part first, you know, both sides, obviously. Then when you get to here, you're going to want a smaller stone because there's a belly. It's got a curve. It's called a recurve. So you're going to want a thinner stone. i got them sitting over there. You're going to want a thin stone, like about an inch wide, maybe an inch and a half wide. Um, there's lots of companies that make them. There's diamond stones. There's aluminum oxides. Get one of those. And because you're going to want it to sharpen like this, if you can see my finger, to go across because it has a curve that goes like this. And you got to be able to get inside there. If it's big and flat, like picture this. You see how there's a, you probably can't see, but there's a gap underneath that right now. So you won't be able to hit it if it's big. So you want it small so you can get the entire thing. Or a round stone will work really good. Round stone is for recurve, so. Alright, she's a rock star hater. A rock star hater. Um, you said you're only going to be 15 minutes. Oh, don't give me no shit, woman! Alright, okay, it's sharp, but the second tip isn't as sharp. 
Yeah, just do it again. Go back to your low grit and get it sharp from your first stone. Don't mess around with any other stone. Forget about the other stones. Your first grit. That's the only grit that matters. If it ain't sharp from the first stone, it's not going to be sharp off of any other stone. So if you have a 300 grit stone and it's not crazy sharp from that 300, then 600 ain't going to do you any good. Everybody thinks that it gets sharper as you move up. That's not true. You should have a crazy sharp edge off of... This is a 300 grit edge right now. Give me something. Ah, cut the shit out of something. This is 300 grit. First stone off of diamonds. And I'm not trying to brag or nothing. I'm just trying to show you that... Don't worry about any of the other stones. That first stone, you will have a good edge. Or you can get a good edge. Why is it always backing me up? You're spitting red hot sharpening fire. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The rock set is amazing. Gotcha. Wait, gotcha. They come razor sharp but seem to dull even if you don't use it. Are you talking about the, the rock stud? I used it in my video, and it did get some wear on the edge. I'm, uh, in the, all the videos I've seen by rock stud, they strapped it back, like, perfect. Now, I'm not saying it's dull, because it's not. Let's check it. It's not dull at all. I mean, it's still very sharp. Extremely sharp, but I can feel nicks. You know how when you run your nail across an edge, you can feel the little bumps if it's not like perfect. I can feel those, so that tells me that I did put a little bit of wear on the edge, and of course I did because of the the type of grind it is. This type of grind is gonna take damage probably a little bit easier than if it had a V grind or just a regular edge. But in all their videos, they sh make it seem like because of the heat treat, it drops back really nice. Now, that's probably the truth. And I'm probably just using the wrong type of stropping compound because they recommend a certain type of compound and strop. I just need to try to use what they recommend, which I've said this a couple times, which is the denim pants, you know, just denim Wrapped around a piece of wood with compound on top of the denim jeans. They say if you strap it on that, it'll bring the edge right back to true. I just celebrated whatever that is with the fam, and now I have enough to make a knife purchase. Super excited. That's awesome, Wallaby. Do you know what you're going to get? The rock set is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. I just seen somebody else that um, had one. Uh, who was it? Was it Alex Knife and Box? I think it was Alex from uh, Alex's Knife Box. I think we all had a part in this victory. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, guys. We have 50 people in here, and I hate to leave when we have 50 people in here, but we are... I'm going to get out of here. I do have a lot of great sharpening content coming up. And if you guys have an opportunity, the next videos I post, like the reviews, if you ha if you can, try to watch them and let me know if you like the way that, that I'm doing the videos now. Because I'm doing them a little different. And try to watch it from beginning. Don't try to fast forward because there's a point to it. I'm inserting clips of my words of what's going on so I can show things. Now, I'm probably not going to be able to do that with all the videos because it, I would be editing for days. It takes me a long time to do those videos, but I just want to know if it's better or if it's not. If it's not better, then I won't do them like that. I'll just talk. But I'd rather show what I'm saying in the video. Like if I say the detent ball, you should be able to see the detent ball so you know what it is. Do you know what I mean? 
anyways, I love you guys. I'm going to get out of here. Hey, Brigade, you motherfucker. You come in here right at the end. Feeling buzzed and generous. Well, thank you for uh, donating to Knees Knives Live because a few dollars goes a long ways at Knees Knives, let me tell you. <laughs> a long ways. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. All right, guys. Peace out. Thank you, Alex. I really do appreciate that. What? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, fiend. Great stream as always. Keep it up. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. That makes me feel really good because I, uh, I always wonder after the videos, I always wonder, like, how did it go? Did it go good? Was it good? Were they entertained? Did they like it? I really, truly always think that. And sometimes I re-listen to it or watch it. And, like, I critique myself. And I'm like, man, you sound like an asshole. Or you sound like a dumb fuck. And I hope you guys were entertained tonight. I love you guys. Peace.